One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Z- extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated or, you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're giving the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. to No Simple Road, you guys. This week's show is brought to you by our friends at Sunset Sunset Lake Lake CBD. CBD. So No Simple Road works really hard to only partner with companies that make your lives better and in turn make our lives better. And this was one that came to us. Knocked it out of the park with this one. Yeah, this was a home run. All the way around, every single product I've tried from them is through the roof amazing. Their gummies are amazing. The salve is incredible. Their pre rolls. Don't forget the coffee. Are wow. amazing. The coffee is, look, even if you just want to have a cup of coffee and you don't care about the CBD, the coffee is phenomenal. When Brooke and I had that coffee, she was like, okay, how much did Aaron say this coffee costs? Because <laughs> she was all about it. She finished her whole cup. I finished my whole cup. You know how it is with us in finishing our whole cup of yeah. coffee. And check it out, man. If you're one of those people that gets too anxious or tripped out when you smoke the weed that's going on around out there right now, this is the thing that will change the game for you. This is super amazing CBD. It is all organic, hand-trimmed CBD hemp flour. It's hand-trimmed, pesticide-free, slow-cured, stored in tamper-sealed glass jars, and they use the same flour to do their pre-rolls this isn't like the shit they found on the floor to do the pre-rolls this is like the good <laughs> stuff and you know that floor weed <laughs> what, what do they call it in the, in the industry um, apple well trim and trim shake b buds yeah this is actual a bud pre-rolls and it's become my go-to every single night before i go to sleep yeah every night so you guys if you're like i said if you're one of those people that was having a hard time with the cannabis out there here's the answer for you sunset lake cbd and they're hooking the no simple road family up with 15 percent off their entire purchase when you go to sunsetlakecbd.com and you make your order and you're checking out put in the promo code nsr15 and you're gonna get 15 nsr15 percent off your whole purchase and you can feel good about what you're doing because these people pay their employees a living wage, 15 bucks an hour. They give a portion of their proceeds to help stop the war on drugs. And this is actually a farm that used to make milk for Ben and Jerry's and decided to do something good that. for the world. I love that part. Yep. So go check them out. SunsetLakeCBD.com online or at SunsetLakeCBD on Instagram and take care of your body, you guys. Hey, what? What do you want, man? 
I just want to tell you about one tell of our me. fine sponsors. Oh, cool. Tell me. So, No Simple Road is sponsored by Shop, Shop Tour Bus. Bus. I already knew that. You did know you that. Did. I did. How'd you know that? I could, because Price every all the week. dope merch we have from them. That's very true. That's true. If you're out there and you want to get yourself some fresh threads this week, go check out shoptourbus.com online or at shoptourbus on Instagram and hook yourself up with something fresh, man, something new, something sparkly and clean. You know what? Outfit the whole family like they did. That is cool, man. They Head had, to toe, even. Right? They had the whole family in t-shirts. It was amazing to see. So if you're new to No Simple Road and you don't know what the hell we're talking about right now, go check out at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram or shoptourbus.com online. These are the coolest Grateful Dead inspired designs out there, period. These, this is the original No Simple Road sponsor, by the way. And these designs are not like on the nose Grateful Dead stuff. You kind of got to know the secret to know what these fun. designs are all about. And even if you don't know, like the people at Apple's work, they still That's what's it. fun about it. I see a lot of customers and it, when even people, people don't know what it is, they dig the shirts. The graphics on them, they're, it's just, they're very unique. They're very fun. And I'd say they're playful. It's not just like, shirts. It's hoodies and hats. T-shirts and hats and stickers and, and pins sometimes. Kids and, stuff. So And go check out the new um, Takes the Wheel When I'm Seeing Double Sugar Magnolia that's coming up. That's posted up on their Instagram right now. And they're hooking up the No Simple Road family with free shipping. Put in the free promo shipping. code No Simple Road when you check out and they will ship a hand-designed one-of-a-kind box with the Grateful that's Dead right. lyrics scrolled on the inside, magically painted and printed and wonderfully artfully designed just for you. And there'll be trinkets and other Gum, things in that box. Candy. And a real live Grateful Dead cassette tape bootleg for you with. to enjoy, explore, and blow your mind with. And the boxes are so dope, you'll want to keep them. I have three now. Yeah. They're just they're they're awesome. You know, this is not a box that ends up in the garage no. in a recycling pile. They're Mm-mm. cute. They're per they're perfect size and they're the way they decorate them is always inspirational. So yeah, infuse your life with a little intention, love, and inspiration and to move you brightly. Soft shirt. Yeah, man. So head over to shoptourbus.com online or at shoptourbus on Instagram and put in the promo code no simple road when you check out get free shipping and get more, more than, than you bargain for. for no simple road is part of Osiris Media Osiris so shout out Osiris you guys got to go over to osirispod.com and check out what's going on under the scales beyond the pond and the helping friendly podcast are doing the harder they fall 2000 Three pods will enter, one pod will be left standing. Choose your fighter and follow along this fall as they train for glory. So if you are a fish fan and you dig those podcasts, go over and check out the Osiris Pod uh, page. It looks fun. Yeah, and uh, check out Tom and (laughs) RJ and the guys over there training for the podcast supremacy that's about to go down. I am not sure how they're going to fight it out and duke it out but I, I i know that there will be one fish podcast that reigns supreme left standing in that ring at the end so go over to osirispod.com check out all the other podcasts on osiris media and support our family hey everyone chris pandolfi from the infamous string dusters here to let you know that my podcast inside the musician's brain is back on the airwaves for season four which means it's time once again to get deep with influential musicians from all across the musical landscape to really understand and translate the lessons of success failure inspiration and hard work that are behind the music and the artists that we love my guests this season include rachel price from lake street dives sam bush chris wood chris funk from the decemberists Lindsay Liu, MC Taylor from His Golden Messenger, and more. Check us out, and thanks for listening. We're so excited to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Music Masters Collective. They are a nonprofit organization that produces unique music events, providing opportunities for fans and artists to meet and collaborate in an inspired and creative atmosphere music masters collective events give you the opportunity to learn from world-class musicians like otill burbridge steve earl richard thompson former members of the band the milk carton kids nikki glassby the fab foe and sean colvin and so many more 
At an event like the Milk Carton Kids Sad Song Summer Camp happening this July, you can expect immersive classes, evenings of entertainment, excellent food, and a space for a lucky group of folks to learn, co-write, workshop, and perform with like-minded peers, all with the guidance of Kenneth Pattengale, Joey Ryan, and some of their favorite songwriters. This all-inclusive week in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York is guaranteed to be magical. Scholarships are available and spots are extremely limited. So visit www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple to learn more. That's www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple. Check it out. Stuff is all cattywampus, wonky. And was the was the the, the one the foam, the foam tile? Was one foam tile was was bothered, came unstuck from the wall. It was driving me crazy. Hey out, now, out of sorts. No simple road family. Welcome back hey now. to no simple road. <laughs> oh shit! Wow, when stuff like that happens, I fucking love it. Man. Um, so, if you listened to last week's episode with uh, Scott Metzger. You heard at the very beginning of the show, if you're one of those people that is faithful to the No Simple Road vision, doesn't fast forward through the commercials, <laughs> at the end of the commercial, you heard the Higgs jingle start, the record scratch, and a new jingle, a new jingle. expose itself in all of its glory on No Simple Road. And I just want to take a minute and acknowledge that that happened and say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To Thanks, the Higgs, John. man. Thanks, you guys Brittany. fucking rule. Thanks to everybody that was involved with that fun little project. And that is a, a, a part of the vision of revamping the look and feel of NSR. So I um, emailed John a while back and said, hey, man, I'm coming up with a new logo for No Simple Road. And um, I want an updated jingle for the beginning of the show. And John was like, Oh hell yeah, no problem. And we hung out and waited and every couple, like a, once a week or so <clears throat> I'd get an update from him. It's coming along, man. I'm excited. Can't wait for you <laughs> to hear it. And then he like about a week and a half ago, he texted me. He was like, we should have it done by tomorrow morning. And like 10 minutes later, he texted me the song. <laughs> I was like, okay. But it's, um, it's the Higgs featuring Brittany Lark, which is John's lovely wife. Yeah, lovely girl. So thanks, you guys, for all of the hard work. It is ab- just exactly perfect. So I appreciate it. So all you people out there that were heard last week's episode and were wondering what the hell is going on, that is what the hell is going on. And to boot, I have another announcement. Are you ready? To boot, to boot, to boot. There is no llama in the Golly, house. Golly, to boot, to boot. No, check it out, man. Because... Well, that happened there is also a new logo getting ready to drop so probably by the time this episode is out you can go to at no simple road on instagram and see the new logo it will be up there and and, the, and this was no simple road getting to this logo because <laughs> oh my god Aaron, Aaron, I'll, I'll tell him so you know Aaron, Aaron last weekend he's been working on this logo putting a lot of time into it showing us and had it all ready to go almost and somehow lost it on his iPad. Well, okay. If any of you guys out there do do any kind of design, you know that design programs have layers, right? And like ogres. Yeah. Like onions and parfait. (laughs) And, um, (laughs) I deleted all, I flattened it and deleted all the layers on accident. And in procreate, once you delete something, if you haven't saved it to something else, it's fucking gone. So I just had a flat 
logo that I could never change the colors on ever again. So I had to redraw the whole thing. But it's done. It's done. And you guys are going to see it. All, almost done. He was farting around with yeah. it a little. Right before we started recording here, me and Mel were like, it's awesome. But Aaron's the, he's mm-hmm. the critic. Well, yeah. I, I wonder if musicians feel like that. With so, I was thinking sure. that. Everybody feels like that. Yeah, when with they our make own something. things. Oh, it's we finally done. Things. That's it, man. We, track it. That's it. We're done. Put it on the album. And then an hour later, as he's listening to it at home, he's like, I could add one more piece, you know, oh, yeah. string part to that. Right. Oh, that guitar part could have more. It's Human never done. nature to to fuck with it until you ruin it. To want, sometimes want more. Like yeah, it. It, it's the more thing. It's like I could have done it better. My I could have beat my time two seconds. I could, you know. And then there's that fine line, like cook, like adding too many spices to yep. something. Then it just okay. Now it tastes like everything and nothing. It tastes like mush. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah, new logo coming out, and new, a new jingle, new jingle, new logo, new attitude. We're getting new ready. Lo- we we got this new episode for you, With Kenny Roby. Kenny Roby, guys, this okay. What a sweet man. Because the Royal Potato family is part of the No Shout Simple out Road Kevin. family. Yeah, man. Kenny came to us through the Royal Potato family, and you know, it's like we've told you guys before. Sometimes. We have artists on the show that we are not familiar with beforehand, and this was one of them. And this was one of those people that left all of us in awe of the personality of the person behind making the music and the music itself. This is an interview that you are going to want to really pay attention to. This isn't one to just have on in the background while you're working. I mean, you can also do that. I don't mind. It's okay. But... This is one of those you really want to pay attention to. Kenny is a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, guys? Help me out. Kenny's a very insightful. Uh, okay, I, was deep, saying I wasn't sure. What deep yeah, thinking cat. This guy is, you know, and just like always, we just get right into it. There's no, there's no uh, takeoff. We just are in orbit from the beginning of this. Yeah, and you'll hear a lot about these. Got a new album out, the Reservoir, that came out on August seventh. Uh, you guys need to go over and you need to listen to this. Just a fun fact: he loves Randy Newman and the yeah. Whalers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and so this, like I said, this is one of those you're going to really want to sit down and pay attention to. And again, Royal Potato Family, you guys, we love you so much. Thank you, Kevin, for for making this happen, and yeah, Kenny, thank thanks. you for taking the time with us for. Spending an hour with the No Simple Road family and bearing your soul. If if you guys out there are fans of Neil Casal, and I know that 99.9% of you out there are, um, you're really going to enjoy this. Kenny, Kenny and Neil were uh, very, very good friends, brothers, I would dare to say. And uh, Kenny gets into that in here, and I won't ruin any of it for you. I'll just let you know that that's coming up. So, yeah, man. So, but... We don't we don't just do that. We don't just do interviews and have conversations here. We also talk about ourselves. How you doing, Mel? Uh, I mean, I'm all over the place, to be honest. What do you mean? I'm feeling super calm, like as of now, right now. Mm-hmm. But it was very hard week, and just mentally, not necessarily even physically, um, emotionally, really, mainly. And so I'm just dealing with some emotional trials. And other than that, everything else truly is okay. Isn't that weird? Isn't it weird how like when you, how do I say this? Even though the ocean is like tumbly, you still feel calm and centered. And you know what I mean? Like I just, I know that in the past for me, when things would get out of whack it would throw my internal world into a tailspin and i think that's one good thing that's come out of 2020 is i'm learning i'm getting better at sitting in the middle of turmoil and being all right inside myself when things outside myself aren't okay yeah do you know what i'm saying yeah i've seen you grow in that regard um for sure, because that wasn't a thing before. Um, but yeah, like I I feel good. I mean, 
there, it's still always in the back. It's kind of like having a lump in your throat, you know, but at the same time, like, you know, everything around, like I'm, I'm happy about things. <laughs> I'm just emotionally, you know, distraught lately. Mm-hmm. It, there, I, I told you this week, like for me, it, it's been a struggle to, um, not want to talk about the same shit every week when we get on yeah. doing the show. Like yeah, you were having a hard time with the show and just being repetitive and uh, negative. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to talk about all the stuff, but you know what? That, that is what's going on Yeah, on one hand and you can't ignore it. Can't ignore it. And then on the other, it's, it really is a learning experience. All of this, like, yeah, it's it's serving to teach me a lot about who I am and how I deal with stuff. And I don't know about you guys out there, but it sure does seem like the the longer all of this goes on, I'm talking about like the quarantine and the pandemic and the elections and the all the riots and all that stuff and the protesting and all of that as a big soup the longer it goes on, it, at least for me, when I see it, there's no, there's no end date to all of this. It's, it's an, in, that fish song, my, my sentence stretches on undefined and that can be really difficult. And then thinking about that, wondering, well, am I ever going to know the end date of this thing? Is there ever going to come a time when I'm going to feel like it's done and over? And I started thinking about it this week and I was like, no, it's never going to be like that. It's life. That's exactly what I was going to say. That actually is life. And so at some point I got to get up and dust myself off. Because there is no end date. Like, like, okay, November 8th. Remember that? That was the day (laughs) everything went back to normal. This is something that's going to slowly transition and into whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Into whatever it's going to be. And now we're starting to deal. I mean, because now there, I mean, life is happening too. So there's other, you know, other normal problems, things that happen these times of years. Like what's on my mind is the fires right now. There's a lot of fires going on. And and I mean, then that's a, that happens every year. Uh, But you know, there's the normal parts of life too, and Santa then sometimes, out to the, those yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I talked to, uh, well, I jumped right in here. So Go ahead, my, my we, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing better. I was struggling with work stuff. I mean, I'm still working my ass off uh, every week, which, uh, which I like anyway. I mean, I like working, but I've learned to kind of calm down a little. Also, thanks, to, thanks to Jake Weaver for his awesome advice on we're taking this new iodine. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, what is it? The iodine and, and sel- the um, selenium. 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 I was going to say um, selenite. <laughs> the stuff is amazing. Uh, there's there's a book out there, Doctor Brownstein, that wrote a book on this. This stuff. Uh, Why you need it? Really iodine. gets your brain working good and stuff. Um, so I'm balancing out there. But then back to the fire thing. I talked to my mom. My mom lives up by. Uh, uh, Oakhurst was which is up by Yosemite National Park in the Sierra Nevada Central California and there's a lot of fires going on right now and they're about 10 miles from where my folks ranch is Damn. up there the heavy smoke uh, my nephew lives down in the valley by Fresno and he said the entire San Joaquin Valley is just full of smoke so and who was we heard that up in by Marin County and other places? I mean, there's so quite a bit if, going on if, in California. If you and guys out there, all those people. If you guys out there, go over to Graham Lesh's Instagram page. Um, friends of the family, uh, John and Liz Payne, recently lost their home to the CZ Aww. Lightning Complex fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and I guess the post here says that John reached out to Graham. In 2013, about midnight north and his band, Scary Little Friends, doing a Cobb Hill in Santa Cruz. And since then, they've played countless shows together with Midnight North and Scary Little Friends, Elliot Peck and Friends, bar shows at Terrapin Crossroads, and more. And then Graham says, Our beards meant we were mistaken for brothers or each other quite often. I'd hope to visit their place again for a studio session, house concert, or just hang out <clears throat> once the pandemic chilled out. I still hope to give them a chance to rebuild and then do all that stuff. 
So there, if you go to this post on Graham Lesh's Instagram, which is at Graham Lesh, there's a link in his profile to a GoFundMe to help John and Liz rebuild. And Graham goes on to say, obviously, there are no shortages of worthy causes these days. But if you can spare it, I hope you'll join me in helping two great people get back on their feet. Aww. So I, I wanted to shout that yeah, out. That's, thanks for bringing that up, Apple. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a serious thing. It's fire. These, this has been a very, very dry season uh, all over. In, so, in it, more ways than just physical. Well, and then like Bro, Japan, yeah. Japan was having like those typhoons and we're like um, evacuating or telling a, a million or more people to evacuate. That's crazy. Because of these crazy typhoons. It's funny. You know, I, I was sitting on the porch this morning and, um, it, you know, it's Sunday and it was really nice here. Yeah. Nice, cool breeze. I was sitting day. out there with my coffee. I had my, my iPad. I was working on our new logo for the show. I was happy and I was like thinking back to last summer and, and Dick's and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to put on uh, 2018 Gorge Fish because that was a really monumental show for Mel and I. And um, so I put on the second set, started with the tweezer and immediately started crying. Immediately. And I was like drawing through tears and just like, I'm not crying, you're crying. And by yourself, by myself (laughs) and like and then laughing too, like at memories of like certain moments in the song, I remembered some stuff happened and was laughing with like tears. And I, and then um, Simon came out and was sitting with me. And I was like, you know what, Simon? And I think I said this to Apple too. I, I was like, I feel like a little kid. Yeah, you said this too. That got sent to my room and got my favorite toy taken away. And I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do any, I was being a good boy. Hanging out, but you're being taught a lesson, and anyway. I got taught a lesson for no reason. You're going in solo, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and it was a trip to like feel that feeling, and it, and it made me realize like, and I thought I want to talk about this when we do the intro tonight. When you said that, too, and you, we do, I think everybody can. I, when you said that, it was like, yeah, and, and that's the reaction to like 2020. It's like, Ugh! I just want to lay on the ground sometimes and <laughs> kick and flail my feet because then. It's not going to change anything, but that feels good to do that sometimes. But it sure felt good to channel that energy into creativity today. It felt good to to move that thought I, funk. Oh no, no! <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for when not missing something? I can't think of another word for it right now. Apps. I, I don't know. know. Don't try. <laughs> um, channeling that missing live music thing into creating art. And especially for us, like, you know, that represents who we are and whatever. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's such a monumental thing in all of our lives. Music is so big. It represents so many things. It represents family. It represents fun. It represents getting outside of ourselves. Spirituality. It, spirituality, community, connection. Coping with emotion. Emotion. I mean, I could, the list could just, we could do a scroll that could go around the planet. And it, it's, it really like set the hooks in me. And I've had a lot of doubt in my head during all of this that like, wow, live music could go away. Like that, that thing could disappear. And then looking at what's going on right now, if you pay attention on Instagram, yeah, there is Fras- no fucking way, man. No, Frasco and the no, Kitchen Dwellers and no. Mahali, they all did a show, a drive-in show. And there's so many people that are doing little things here and there. And I think Delaney and Co., they were going to do something. Mm-hmm. So that is awesome. And get it as safe as you can be. And, and, as, you, know. and you know what? This is coming out tomorrow. We're actually part of a wedding that's happening down in Eugene. And anybody that lives up in the Pacific Northwest, you guys are invited. Um, If you want to check it out, there's a graphic up on the page at No Simple Road. And that will give you instructions on how to get your invite to this one-of-a-kind wedding with the Higgs and uh, High Step Society and Sponge. Sponge. And two sets from each band and camping and the whole nine yards, man. So if you're interested in that and you live up in these neck of the woods, it's going to be down in Bonita. And you can go to No Simple Road 
uh, at No Simple Road and to get your info. For don't that. dilly dally because this is has a uh, small capacity on it to stay within all the guidelines and stuff. Oh yeah, so, that's that's right. So reach out. This is invite only. Hit us up. You're all invited. All yeah. Even if you're on the East Coast and you want to fly out for one night, <laughs> come on, man. Let's go. Let's go boogie. Put don't on your dancing yeah, shoes. Yeah. Ah, so. I don't know, man. I, I waffle back and forth between like, okay, I'm, I I can't, you know, every week when we crack the mics, like talking about everything that's going. And you know what, man? But we're working it out. We're working it out. And, and honestly. I, and it's our show. This is literally our show. And if we're feeling funky, we can't talk about it on our show. What the fuck? That's true. You're true, Mel. That's what I well, mean, it's, and it's not like we're bringing stink or everybody's feeling funky. Yeah, I mean, it'd be different if everything. I'm not bringing was the like, vibe down. I'm just, I'm just like, saying, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's, it's going to Northwest Spring Sun. I don't yeah, want to go. I think Fuck it's like that. anything right now. You don't want to dwell on it or anything, no. but it is. It is what's happening. It's so what we live. That's in. the one reason why I don't like talking about my issues or whoa problems or any of that is because I don't like like to disturb the vibe. I don't want to change. Like, oh man, that sucks. Yeah, but you then then we can go through it, I guess. At least we're going through it. <laughs> it th- it's just an explanation. You gotta I'm go not through saying it to get to I'm it. not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying I don't be liking too harsh than you. The harsh the vibe. If I already got a harsh vibe, let me just let me poop it out. Let me <laughs> fart it out. Let me burp it out. Let me run it out. So you asked me a question <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> and. I want you to ask it again. Um, I asked Aaron, we were laying on the hammock and I said, 2021, if everything is, I don't want to say go back to normal, but if, if concerts are, yeah, if, if everything's open again, (laughs) however it's going to be, um, and things are booked, you know, lock-ins and festivals and strength summits and all of it, you know, concerts, um, what, is your favorite one or what would you look no, forward to that's what you, yeah, uh, not seeing the most? So, yeah. Maybe not what's your favorite, but what would you like? You're buying your tickets no matter what. Well, <laughs> I, I I'll, I'll tell them the answer I gave yesterday. Immediately. I was like, I want to go see fish. And, and then I was like, and Northwest string summit. And then I was like, and skull and roses festival. And, but, and lock in and lock down and this yeah. and that electric no, for but, oh. <laughs> I, I really do want to go see fish and I really do love Northwest Spring Summit because it's our family close well, to and it's, yeah, 20 Oregon, minutes 20 away. minutes from our door, like and the people there are so wonderful. Anyway, that is a great question to keep in the forefront of our minds as a community and a family. We have talked to several musicians now and amongst ourselves that not having shit to look forward to sucks and is hard for a lot of us. And so let's make up our own thing to look forward to. And it's not to get our hopes up to get them dashed. It's so that this can our hearts can be a little lighter, man, because I know I've had a heavy heart lately and and the, the tone of the world is heavy. So if that little thing, if we can do that. And lighten the mood for ourselves a little bit. Let's do that. So, Mel, what's the one thing you're looking forward to the most? Not your favorite, but we'll, like 2020, everything's open. Girls are hula hooping in the streets. There's unicorns and everything's happening. What do you want? Oh, what am I looking forward to? Like, it's, I, I don't know. I guess just like a real good old fashioned vacation from everything without feeling bad about going anywhere do you know what i mean like Mm -mm. just oh like you shouldn't be traveling yes you know like it's that's what it is it's i guess the the freedom from constraint is what i'm looking forward to you know because i definitely want to go see sydney and i want to go to la and hang out with them and i also i love northwest string summit that was i was the one that i was really looking forward to and because we were involved with so many amazing festivals last year, like just thinking back, like the time that we had in Ventura with Skull and Roses, like that's 
priceless, you know? So I guess just the, <laughs> the freedom, that's what I mean. The freedom back is really what I'm looking forward to. All right, Apple, your well, turn. That, well, that's one of those quite, like you said, this was asked yesterday and at first, I mean, it's one you need to answer quickly, but then you immediately want to change your answer, <laughs> add to it. Mm -hmm. So mine, when Aaron asked me, and now I just heard it worded a little differently too, but mine immediately was Northwest String Summit. And then it was like a, going to like a more specific moment and, I was like, drop oh, me in. True. And well, now I'll expand on that because I was like, okay, drop me into Saturday night at String Summit because that's the night where they have like all the costumes and that bowl is just going off. That's the moment. But then thinking about it more, it's like, drop me into Saturday night at any show <laughs> at Fish at the Gore, a Saturday night, the middle of the run of yep. the festivals, right? It's always like that Saturday so. night is, that's like the meat of the sandwich. Yes. Yeah. You know, all the rest, but that's the night where you just get that second win after a whole day, and it, it just dropped me on Saturday night at Fish, Fish Dicks, The Gorge, uh, String Summit. I'll tell you what, anything. too. I was, some for some reason, thinking about it today, um, and I really do miss going to shows. Like... I well, I mean, because that's not the predominant thought in my head. I would Mel like, duh. Well, yeah, you, well, it's not my predominant not, thought. I can't wait to go to a show. Can't wait to go to a show. Mel has in her whole life. You haven't gone to shows your no, whole life. Like no. it, it, it wasn't like a mainstay. It was now, not. It that's was, good to hear you say that. Yeah, yeah it is. Mel's like, I miss. I show. do miss a, miss a show. show. Like I was realizing how much I was working this year based on how little I was working last year, uh -huh. and I, I I was laughing to myself, and then I was like. I was enjoying every second away. <laughs> You're going to fuck around and become management. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, well, no. That's the thing. It's a trip with work, too, because we're so big. I thought that, like, I've been thinking about it. It's like, how how did I go to festivals last year? We're so fucking busy. It wasn't yes. that busy. But it wasn't that busy. Like, it, like with what I do, it, it is just insane since March. Well, People want it was weed busy. more than ever and groceries more yeah, than ever. Yeah. And, consuming is at an internet an all-time high kind of yeah man so keep that in your head guys think about that question this week like what what one thing you're really looking forward to when Next everything's year. back yeah. open and we're all going to shows again what one show are you looking forward to what one experience really makes you feel good and you know that what i was talking about earlier about this morning sitting on the porch listening to the gorge fish from last year and and tears streaming down my face that's not a bad thing man that is not a bad feeling that's a feeling of like overwhelming joy and missing something that you love and that's okay that's that's gratitude for the thing and joy that you ever got to even yeah. experience that thing in the first fucking place man. and that like you just said that's tears for the family that's like your long long you're like your cousin you haven't seen in in, yeah. in a year or you're supposed to end, but you're going to get to see him. It's just got to wait and see when. Yeah. yeah. Trying to work out those deets right now. <laughs> also, I just wanted to shout out um, Chris, Chris Dyer. Yeah, man. Oh, I was going to do that yeah. too. He, I feel like I want him on the show every week. He's so positive and uplifting. And even through trials and hardships and stuff that's super painful, he seems so comfortable expressing it. And I just learned so much about how to express myself by just watching his demeanor and how he's so candid about everything that breaking up with the love of his life because of, you know, just drifting away. Like that's a hard thing to just put out there. And he did it as beautifully as I could have ever seen it. Like Chris Dyer is a mensch. He is an artist in every way. And I am so grateful to have spoken with him. I'm glad that he's in our life. Aaron just ordered me the dopest hooded blanket from um, positivecreations.net. Did you finally net. pick one? I did finally <laughs> pick one, the Kundalini Rising. Um, but I just wanted to say a personal thank you to him um, and to his artwork and to his life because it's really helping me to learn how to be more vulnerable and even just articulate it and bring it out. Yeah, I, I sent him a little note. You did? I did. And, uh, you know, hey, Chris, if if you happen to hear this, just know that the No Simple Road family loves you and we stand with you, brother. And, yeah. and we're here with you. 
and we feel you. And that's really awesome to see a, see a man bear his soul and heart. Uh, yeah, that's and he, it's beautiful. He the way he talked about the whole you know masculinity or whatever. Like everybody has emotions. You know, everybody gets sad or happy or whatever. Like, that, how do we expect men to just repress their emotions because they're a man? Like him bringing that up, another way to like bring a barrier down like anybody can freaking cry it doesn't matter what your genitals look like you can cry (laughs) wow i never thought about it like that but yeah that's true and bringing it back to kenny roby this week's guest like that's one of the things that really shocked not shocked me but struck me about our conversation with him was the depth of emotion that came from him around neil and Mm -hmm. and what Everything well, that he happened. was an emotional person. Well, yeah, I mean, all, most artists are emotionally wired people, you know, emotional folks. That's, you just felt it when we first his you, voice. Yeah, his you could hear everything. that that this was something that he's working out still, and it was an honor to have that talk with him and to be part of that process. So, Kenny, man, um, thank you for being on the show with us again. Thanks, Kenny, and thanks for taking the time a day to. Hang out with No Simple Road, man. It means the world to us, and I know our listeners are going to dig it. And Apple, one more time, will you tell me um, what the name of the album is? I forgot. The, Res- the Reservoir. Reservoir. That's right. Yeah, and this this is an emotional, really good album. Uh, you need to. This is an yeah. album. This is an album you put on. Uh, I, for me, it's like one that I've enjoyed listening to to myself. Kind of. It's yeah. not one you put on while you're out on the patio hanging out and so, i mean you can in the back but it's not really a background album i guess is no what I'm this saying. is a foreground this re- album for sure yeah, this like requires a diary attention. entry that yeah. you're listening into you want to pay attention to this music. and so yeah but we're going to do the business we're going to get you to the interview right yeah. now so go follow us at no simple road on instagram and at no simple road on facebook if you head over to no simple road.com and you click on gear at the top in the oh menu my God, Mel gear. got her new Razorback tee. He said he wanted to take pics, but he didn't. I haven't had, That'll happen. haven't had the chance yet. A little yet. photo photo I've shoot. had this shirt on for two days straight. Anyway. <laughs> the face mask. The oh, face yeah. Mask. Face You're mask. Dope. They really are. John, Shout out John B. again. Always repping always the show. Always supporting the family, man. Uh, John Looking B. Looking great doing it. Um, and then there's hoodies and t-shirts, and the new logo design will be up on some t-shirts. I got to... I got to figure out how I'm going to do that one. I don't know if what we're doing there yet, but he's, he's almost, he's almost there. We can, uh, we we're can so smell close. it. We're so, <laughs> we're, we're, we're so stoked with it. Everything but Aaron's going to tweak some things and figure out um, when it's perfect. Yeah. And then also if you want to do something special for no simple road and you don't want to spend any money, you can go on um, Apple Podcasts or whatever device or system or thing you're listening to us on and leave us a five-star review and a few little words of love and wisdom for us there. And I'll interject real quick. We did get one review on Friday. Uh, This is from Brown Ale Guy on Friday. He said, great shows, five stars. Alex Jordan and Billy String shows were especially great. Keep up the good work. Mm. Alex Jordan and Billy Strange. Thank you, brown ale guy. Yeah, that's what I was... What? Brown ale guy? Yeah. Thank you, brown ale guy. We appreciate that. That is super cool. And see, you could be like brown ale guy. And next week, we'd be reading your thing on the air. But... You'll never know unless you do it. Well, so. beyond that, it just gives us that warm feeling. It's like, warm a, hot, like a hot buttered rum. It's yeah. just kind of like, mm. yeah. And then if you want to take the extra step, like our friend Carrie J did, and sign up on Patreon as a new patron. Carrie, Carrie J. J. Carrie J. Sweet. We speak your name. Boop, boop. <laughs> you can give a Thank buck you, or more a month, and that helps us keep No Simple Road going. And gives us the mental space and creative freedom to keep doing this thing that we love doing so much and bringing to you guys every week and i'm not going to make any promises or say any bullshit out of school i'm just going to say that there's more stuff coming your way in the following weeks so stay tuned because we have some ideas our our manager -manager, (laughs) non-manager jake weaver has come (laughs) up with some ideas for the show and we are going to be implementing those in the weeks to come so stay tuned for that stuff 
and you know yeah, a little you, more interaction yep. and the different things so Fun that's stuff. that's the business side of our world and i don't know that's it we're gonna get you to the, the interview business. so patreon.com forward slash no simple road uh www.nosimpleroad.com for all of your no simple road world news sports and weather and One tepid thing. line yeah oh, oh. nine seven one thank you for reminding me oh we got we a, got a really amazing we did. We did get an amazing trip report, trip report. I that's right this. i'm gonna yeah, yeah. I'm going to play it for you right now. Hello, it's me again. Um, sending all the love from the Midwest. It is a foggy morning in Cincinnati, and I am barely awake yet. So here's a trip report. Uh, a band called High Rider came to town on Saturday night. Um, they're a dead tribute band from Indiana. And they kind of have a lock on the tri-state of Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Um, They were the first band that played dead music that I saw live. It was at a festival called Good People, Good Times in 2016. Shout out to Derek Howard. Love you, brother. Um, Me and my homies were chilling by this beautiful pond. And I hear some ripping and roaring coming from the barn, so I go in there to check it out and... I walk in, the whole band's decked out in tie-dye, the crowd's getting down, and the guitar player is looking me dead in the eyes with this childlike, cartoonish grin on his face, and I look over and ask this whole head next to me, I'm like, who the fuck is this? This is sweet. He goes, high rider, dead cover band, boogies on into the crowd, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is pretty fucking dope. Um... And I watched the set, and I didn't recognize any of the music, but I remember really enjoying it. Um, And that would honestly plant the first seed of what would result in me falling in love with this music. So High Rider played on Saturday. And it was a doozy. The first set was Let the Good Times Roll into Feel Like a Stranger, which that was enough on its own to turn me into a six-year-old. Um, just, <gasps> they're playing my song! When, uh, during Stranger, because, I mean, come on. It's just one of them. Uh, Althea, Me and My Uncle, Into Cumberland Blues, Black Peter, which those two were really cool to hear after listening to the good old Grateful Dead cast and hearing the backstories behind those, especially Black Peter, with how crazy that shit was. And hearing it in... A more refined context i guess and um so yeah that was really cool um all over now expressway to your heart peggy O, I need a miracle into wang dang doodle to finish off the first set so it was amazing um it was my first time seeing the music performed regardless of who's playing it truly loving it um Quarantine has been the time period when I've really sunken my teeth into the Dead's catalog and soaked up as much as I can, learned as much as I can, and just fallen so deeply in love with the music, everything surrounding the music, and everything that that fountain projected out into the world. And um, I looked over at my beloved Holly, and she just like, with this sigh of relief almost, went, I'm so glad you love this music. And I'm like, well, yeah, me too. I slept on it for years. I always had respect for it, but I slept on it. Um, And another friend came up to me and was like, it's so awesome watching you love this music because I've been into this shit since I was like 16 or 17 and seeing the magic on your face is just amazing. And that one hit me because... You know, it, it felt like a minor initiation this show did. You know, it was, it was I, I was seeing the music performed, again, regardless of who's playing it, I was seeing the music performed for the first time with a heart open enough to love the music back as it was loving me. And during the first set, there was this fucking sunset that was just this beautiful vermilion glow of embers surrounded by gold and pink that I found out that a lot of my internet friends had taken pictures of that same sunset. And I thought that was really cool um, because so many people as individuals spread all across the city 
were made still by it for a second in unison and stopped to admire that at that same moment, which I thought was beautiful because it, I, I found hope in that sunset. I found better days poking their heads around the corner and saying, hang on just a little bit longer, stay strong, hang on just a little bit longer because we'll be back soon. And I thought that was really neat. It meant a lot to me. And then you turn around and there's not a cloud behind us except it's the night sky poking up above the horizon with the brightest waxing gibbous moon up there, which, I mean, the moon is the moon. Come on. So set two was one big long jam. There was no breaks between songs. Help on the way, Slipknot, Franklin's Tower. What the fuck? Playing in the band, Eyes of the World, Terrapin Station. What the fuck? Throwing stones, not fade away. And then back into playing in the band because who the fuck doesn't love a nice and tasty sandwich? Um, heavy hitters swinging for the fences with home runs every time. So not only did I get to see Feel Like a Stranger playing in the band, Eyes of the World, and Throwing Stones, which are four out of five of my favorite Dead songs, but I got to see live music again. And it was awesome also seeing how respectful people were being of the circumstance in the air. Um, you know, you had to buy your tickets in a group, and you either got a picnic table or you got a little roped off section. And when people weren't in their little bubbles on the way to the bar or the bathroom or just traveling, uh, they were wearing their masks and people were like staying distance. And of course, with exceptions, you know, how are you going to get a bunch of hippies to follow rules like that? Um, but for the most part, people are doing their part. And honestly, that's what it's going to take for us to get this train chugging again is for people to just kind of get over themselves, suck it up a little bit and do their part to, to say like, we can do this safely. Um, because it is possible, and uh, High Rider was an example of that. Um, so it was great to be back home with the family, and um, for the first time seeing the music, not feeling like I was observing it from the sidelines, but actually actively participating in it, which was a big deal for me. And... Um, I had all my favorite people around me and the, the band was just on fire. Like there is something building with, with creatives. And once that gate opens and once that door gets knocked down, it's going to fucking fly, baby. There's so much building and, and it's, and, and once things loosen up to the point where we can start consistently having these shows again, it's going to be fucking huge, man. Um, it's, it's going to be fucking huge. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm so grateful that I got to basically, uh, get a jump as if my heart was one car battery and the music was another, I got a jump. Um, and everybody else did too. I got to look into a stranger's eyes and see that spark. I haven't been able to do that since February. So I'm still riding that wave through this work week. And um, hopefully uh, hopefully somebody else can find joy in that story. Uh, I enjoy telling it. Uh, I'm sure there's stuff I missed, but, you know, if I were to catch everything, it would take a half hour for me to go through this. So maybe, hopefully, sometime we can have a more in-depth conversation about this kind of stuff. Um, but in the meantime, I'll check back soon and, um, you know, I want to cook y'all motherfuckers dinner. Uh, so yeah, I love you guys so much. Uh, thank you for being you. Thank you for doing what you do. I have to go to work and pull weeds for six hours, which can be meditative sometimes, but you know. Uh, yeah, so much love and gratitude for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check back in soon. Be well. Have a good week. Wow. Well, well, very, yeah, very well said, Eli. You could cook us dinner anytime. I'm not picky. 
bring it. Oh, <laughs> he's that, not. That was awesome, big, dude. And that, <clears throat> yeah, that pretty much sums up everything we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Thanks for calling the tepid line, Eli, and sharing that fun story. If you're, it feels good to know that somebody's out. That that this does. is that, that we're starting to hear this more and more. It's every like every week um, of people going to time, shows. You and, know, when the flowers bear, the first yeah. ones start to bloom. Did you um, see the tree down the street with the the, the cherry mm, tree with the, the white daffodils. blossoms? The what? daffodils are the usually daffodils the, are the announcers daffodils. of spring so up here. So Eli was our little daffodil for the 2020. Yeah, man. So <laughs> Thanks, we Eli. love you, Eli. Thank you for that. If you yourself, you right there yep. in the garden, yep, you that one. in in your house, well, probably all everybody's in their house. Uh, <laughs> if you want to call the tepid line, the number is nine seven one eight zero eight. 1524 it's 9718081524 and you can leave your message there or you could do what Eli did and just email no simple road at gmail.com a voice message and we'll play it on the show man yeah and then you can spread love and positivity yeah and you know what he said that uh show got him through the is carrying him into the work week well it's it's Tuesday today or Monday and the work work week is about to start and I hope that Eli's message goes with you into your work week and you carry that with you man and that ripple goes out and spreads and everybody's happy this week so we're gonna get you to the interview without no ado none no zero ado ado. I'm not gonna wait one more second I wanna do the No Simple Road Crew gives you Kenny Kenny Roby You be quiet. I'll be quiet. Hi, Mel. Hey. Hi, Apple. I was told to be quiet. Well, no, like, <laughs> like not quiet in the oh, sense of being oh, quiet, okay. but like quiet. Hi, everybody. Not doing okay. things. Hi, everyone. Hi, Apple. Hey. We're we're in our new recording space. How's it sound our new out studio. there? Studio. Yeah. Yeah, let us know uh, how this show sounds. And and there will be pictures soon. As soon as we're we're uh, yeah, we're not gonna do gonna be fast. setting it up for mm-hmm. sound. One of my favorite decoration. things about the new setup is that Apple's tea is across the room. That makes well, me happy. We'll get a little side table for him to have. On. <laughs> we'll hook it up. We we're still in the midst of everything. So anti tea over here, Aaron. Well, mm-hmm. Anti ice ice cubes. <laughs> anti ice cubes. Yeah. Hello? Kenny. Here. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm good, brother. I'm relaxing into a Saturday late morning, early afternoon. How about yourself? I'm good. Sounds like your microphone's a lot more pro than my iPhone. <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry about it, man. I got magical <laughs> editing software that'll hook us up. <laughs> um, I am good. I'm going to let the other two introduce themselves to you that are here. Oh, well, hey, Kenny. Okay. Um, it's Mel, and then we have Apple. Oh, yeah, and the, and this is Apple over here. Mel and Apple? Hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us on Saturday and giving us some of your time. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, of course. Like, we were just sitting out on the porch a little while ago listening to your stuff, and, man, thanks for doing what you do, you know, the – the thing that comes to mind listening to your music, Kenny, is just the heart of it and the the craftsmanship of the songwriting. Like, it's really, really awesome, man. And, you know, being part of Royal Potato and all that, like, you just feel like part of the family even before we met you. Yeah. So I'm curious, man, like, in listening to the stuff that we were listening to this morning, like, like I said, there's that depth of soul that's in that. And it, it always impresses me when I hear stuff like that because it's, first of all, really difficult to get that stuff out. And second, it can seem, it would give me anxiety personally. Is it tough for you nope. to get in front of people and, and bury your soul like that? Um. Yes and no. I mean, sometimes it's tough to sort of get in the groove and reach some kind of depth in certain audiences. Um, it, it's it's weird when, when people are really paying attention, like say you're playing a small venue and it's more of a bar or whatever. Um, 
or a floor of a hang. Sometimes you can let it go even more because you don't feel the pressure um, than when an audience is super attentive. Um, so there's less anxiety. And then sometimes it's, it's harder because um, you're trying to give a piece to yourself and it's not really received. And oh, um, wow. and that, that can be tough because I think the, the best performance art, um, it does require an audience. Um, it's a different thing than making a record and somebody listening. I think there's a sort of um, a powerful thing that happens when people listen to music, um, obviously, and, and a sort of a higher new kind of art is created between the listener and, and the art they're listening to or that they're looking at um, or reading. Um, uh, but but there's a different energy when it's a live performance and there's a live audience. Um, that it's sort of like uh, the artist sometimes is only as good as, as the audience. Mm. Um, it it, it kind of goes both ways. I think they work together um, to create... <laughs> you know, at least magic with the lowercase M. I don't know about all the other stuff, <laughs> but, um, you know, we want, that's on this religious, um, I don't know if we'll go there. It's not Sunday yet, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, it's, it, it can be difficult. It, you know, it can, be paradoxes. It, it can be extremely difficult and it can be extremely easy. Um, it's kind of like hanging out with the right people. Oh. You know, if you communicate with somebody, it's, it should be easy. It shouldn't be hard. If it's hard to communicate with them, um, then you can't force it. And it just has to be what it is in that conversation. Um, but if they receive you, um, sometimes it's easier to give more. I don't even know if that's conscious yeah. you know, or a conscious thing. I think it's unconscious that it's just like, you kind of just for lack of a better word to quote, like Doug's on, you see, just kind of groove with the audience and vice versa. And then that's when it's the highest form of performance art. I think when it's, when both those people kind of reach each other at a hundred percent. Um, but that can be far and few between. I know a lot of other performers say the same thing. It's really hard to, to do that night after night. Um, magic doesn't happen every night and, and it can happen when you least suspect it. Sometimes you think, Oh, this will be just right. It's perfect. And then it's forced. And, you know, for lack of a better term, it's kind of awful sex when you're like, well, we both thought each other were, were good looking and we were attracted <laughs> to each other. What, what happened? You know? And then you just show up in the strangest place and then there's magic and you're like, Oh, there's 40 people here. Um, um, and, and it's just some uh, uh, sort of an event happens uh, 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 for lack of a better term, yeah, sort of no. spiritual yeah. experience. And you just never know when it's going to happen, mm-hmm. you know, especially in a band environment where you got the audience, you got members of the band, everybody's on or off or the people are different, but you know, it's to have all that stuff working and firing on all cylinders. It's pre, you know, the, the numbers aren't on your side always. Yeah. The stars <laughs> you know? have to align perfectly for that to be. Sure. A thing, man. Yeah. It, yep. No, wait, I was going to say, we got to back. I got to stop Aaron for a sec. I do this. We, yeah, we do this. We, <laughs> we, Aaron does this. Aaron, we're, we're excited to talk, talk to you and we forgot to have you. We, we know who you are. And for our listeners, <laughs> if you will introduce yourself Thanks, Apple. to our listeners, tell them who you are Just and a conversation. Uh, what you're up to right now, man. <laughs> uh, well, uh, listeners, my name is Katie Roby and I'm up to talking to the folks on No Simple Road podcast. That's what I'm up to. Fuck yeah. On right this on. fun Saturday. <laughs> so back to what we were saying, man, like that m- magic with the lowercase m is the thing that like has made me a music fan, you know, from mm-hmm. sitting in a room on acid at 18, listening to Are You Experienced to my first Grateful mm-hmm. Dead show to 30 whatever years later to now. That is the exact thing that has kept me going back and doing No Simple Road mm-hmm. and talking to you. And, and I, I can remember the moment that that happened. I can like pinpoint it. I bring up listening to Are You Experience? Like that was literally it for me. Like, wow, there's something else going on here. Do you remember back to a moment like that for yourself that you were like, holy shit, this music thing is way bigger than I thought it was. Besides the time that I was on acid at 16, sitting on the side of a mountain, <laughs> listening to Black Sabbath and watching Hawks 
fly around, um, mm. which they were probably buzzards, but I swear they were hawks. They're hawks. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> or eagles or whatever they were, um, whatever magical creatures they were. Right. Um, I don't really know. You know, there was, there was experiences when I was a kid. Um, I don't know of any like sort of like – Paul on the road to Damascus moments where right. I got knocked off my horse. Um, I, I was, I was in a punk rock band when I was 15. I joined the band as a singer. They already had the band form for a few years and they were all a little bit older than me. And, um, some of them were in college and one was in like high school and I was 15. And, um, you know, those are some, at times, as far as a performer, some pretty euphoric experiences could open up for all kinds of people who were my heroes when I was, before I was even 17. Um, so I had a lot of stage experience. My, my dad was a choir director as well oh. on the opposite end of the punk rock spectrum, <laughs> you know, and so, so, you know, I had a few spiritual experiences, I guess you would say, you know, um, as a kid with music, um, it was an escape for me. You know, I definitely, like a lot of kids, had big, fat, um, 70s realistic headphones with the curly, um, the, whatever they're called, like the pigtail wires, yeah. you know, stick it into an old Panasonic <laughs> stereo or whatever, um, uh, with stolen records from my brother, um, anything from Steve Miller to Stevie Wonder to my sister's um, you know, these records. Um, and, you know, Stuff like Kenny Rogers and then older country like Hank Williams and old Ray Charles records. Um, I always kind of escaped into it. Um, and, uh, you know, I had, uh, I was the youngest of six kids. So it was definitely an escape from the volume of my house to crank up those headphones. That's like your space. Um, what's that? that? That becomes like your, your secret space. Your, your little Yeah, hideaway. I think it did. Yeah, it did. I, you know, um, and I hated being there like a lot of teenagers did. So yeah. that was my hideaway to turn off the lights and pretend I was somewhere else. Um, and I did go other places. I think, I think the listening to the, like the whalers, especially early whalers, um, like sixties, Bob Marley and the whalers before oh. they became Bob Marley and the whalers as a kid, you know, or as a teenager with the headphones on, that's probably where I went, you know, on vacation the most, so, so to speak. Wow. Um, I mean, regardless of drugs, it was just a matter yeah. of like, I just felt that stuff, you know? Um, I really, and that's the thing is what was cool. Like Neil Patel and Dave schools and I were all like, you know, a big, big reggae fan. So it was kind of interesting. These people in this whole different world are all big old reggae fans. Um, and, uh, so we had that in common and that to talk about. But yeah, when Neil and I toured around Europe in the nineties, we were always listening to old reggae stuff. And I always loved the I always loved the kind of I, I didn't see much of a jump between like bluegrass, like hillbilly and hillbilly country, like forties and fifties harmonies mm -hmm. and like mountain harmonies from Jamaica. It seemed pretty close to the same thing to me. Well know? now I gotta go back and listen. Um, <laughs> see yeah i i never yeah i mean that. it was that same deep lonesome you know sound um and something that was sort of achieved with all those people singing together on the mountain so to speak um that really took it somewhere else for me that was sort of spiritual i guess you could say wow um i still feel that way i, I like things that almost like it conjures up something older and more ancient than than the time that it's in you know, and I always felt that way about older bluegrass, um, especially the family brothers. I feel like there was just ghosts flying all around those people when they sang or, you know, old Irish music or, um, or reggae harmonies, you know, mm -hmm. um, stuff like culture and, and the whalers and all that stuff. I just love those kind of harmonies. And I grew up with harmony singing in my house. So that's, yeah. that's probably something to do with it as well. I mean, if you think about it on a spiritual level, that <clears throat> music is infused with the vibration of the <clears throat> experience of those people and the ancestral line and, and not just like in the mountains in Jamaica, but like you said, the, in the Blue Ridge mountains or wherever, mm -hmm. there's that, mm -hmm. that vibration that comes from 
your experience of life and the people that have infused who you are and and what you've become and then that becomes the music that you're making and that goes out and i i'm with you 100 percent. those ghosts are real man and that that's an exciting like when you can conjure that thing and it's not i don't even know is that even intentional in making music that you're thinking about that or is that just a, a byproduct of doing something purely from your soul? Yeah. I, you know, and I don't know that's so hard to know if it's like you were asking me, like how you get there and expose that and, and, and show any kind of depth. I mean, I think all people, you know, I would hope, you know, that all people have some kind of depth. And I think the more that we kind of get out of the way of it, that, that kind of comes through. And so, you know, um, just like a good record or any good art, you just don't want to get in there and screw it up, you know, <laughs> get in the way of it. Yeah. Um, maybe same spiritually or in, or, or whatever it is, you know, um, just to get out of the way and, um, not covered up with whether it's the ego or, or just, um, complicated, you know, mm -hmm. with just, being human <laughs> yeah. um, and our experience and our past and, and our ways of thinking and just kind of get in the way of that stuff. And it's, I guess, I guess to that point, it's, it might be sort of meditative. I think that's when I am at my best when I sing or write or, you know, on a stage or in the studio uh, to where I'm just not thinking about it. And it's sort of just, it's that holding those two things of like, I'm super concentrated, but I'm not picking it apart. And, um, I'm, you're just kind of in the groove, so to speak, mm -hmm. just sort of on the beam. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that I think people overthink stuff a lot in music and art. Um, you have to do your work, you know, you have to, to practice and you have to learn and practice writing and practice performing for years to get good enough to, to get out of your own way. <laughs> it's kind of the yeah, irony it of happen. it, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. Like and, and, and I think a lot of people do overthink it and I think people are super self-conscious and that can work for some people because then it creates a vulnerability. But it, I mean, the goal is to sort of have your eyes roll back into your head, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, without thinking about enforcing that too much, you know, and my heroes growing up did that, whether they were Bob Marley or whether they were just drummer, you know, um, from the class or any of that stuff. I think right. those people just sort of just became a bit possessed, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, um, you know, I love Randy Newman. I don't think he got real possessed, but that's a whole different <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, that's a difference. Right? Um, <laughs> and... and and there's a little bit of caricature going on too. It's like, I fully believe everything about Ray Charles, but I think it was a little bit of an act at times too. You know? Yeah. The, yeah. Sometimes the there was a theater in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a little theater in it. And sometimes his voice became a bit of a caricature, you know, and we, um, we, some of his tricks became, you know, like he always used that pitch, so the little pop and crack, you know, that went on with Ray Charles voice. Like later on, I was like, Oh, that's a trick. That's you know? a signature. Yeah. Well, that we always talk about that, like like that, like Ray Charles, all one of our favorites. We look at kind of like it's a conjuring, it's like a shaman you're channeling. One mm -hmm. of our favorites is Tom York from Radiohead. Like yeah. Radiohead, like you know, they turn it. There's a certain character to it, but it's also they're so open to that channeling of the the magic, whatever that it, it's amazing to see some of those that just have it so naturally and are so in tune with it. I mean, like Jared, yeah. <laughs> We're seen to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and isn't that the trick? I mean, I think about it in terms of conversation because that's what mm -hmm. we do. And, you know, you mm -hmm. talk about being on the beam. There's, there's a definite beam in conversation as well. And that sure. eye, eyes roll back in the head. I guess, I guess they call it active listening is, is what it is. But the, that thing can carry over into infusing all different parts of your life and not just those moments on stage, right? Like you, mm -hmm. don't you carry that with you when you leave the stage and, and then it starts to become active meditation is just moving through life. 
Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's the whole thing is that, you know, um, you read about like Buddhist monks or whatever, whether or Christian monks or whatever. Um, and, you know, they, they, they can't just go stay on the mountain the whole time. What's the point? And the point is to get out in the world and be of the world or in the world at least. Um, and, and if that's the hope is that you sort of just stay in the groove or what, you know, I know I keep using that term, but you know, whether it's meditative or whatever it is, right. it's just to sort of be yourself. And, you know, there are going to be just like in performance, there are going to be times where people just don't get you, you know, they just don't get me. They just, and it's no use trying to explain it. Mm-hmm. It's just best to just go, okay, we don't play together well. We don't root together. We don't talk together well. You would think that we would get together great. All of our friends said we should hang out and talk, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? But then you get together and you're like, yeah, just doesn't, you know, something, whatever it is, yeah. it's just not that thing. And I've experienced that musically with people who you play with someone who's just amazing. And, and as far as technically, and they do all, you think that when you see them play, with other people, they do all the right stuff, and then you play with them, and you're like, eh. you know, oh, it just didn't it happen. It's good, but it just doesn't have that thing. You know, it should be easy, as Paul McCartney and Keith Richards and Tom Waits and all those people say. Yeah, it should be easy, and life is too short to when you don't have to, at least, to try to converse musically or spiritually or just conversationally. Um, or just hanging out with people you don't group with, you know. And I think that's something you, when you get older, you do start to see that. Yeah. You, you kind of sweat that stuff less, um, and you just move on quicker. I think it's a, it's a. The older you get, and the more you practice life. I think you sort of you, you course correct a little sooner. Yes. Um, before you go in the ditches, you're like, oh <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 okay. You I know? don't and, have to and, crash. And and you drive slower, you know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> sort of like when you get older, you, you just drive slower, mm-hmm. and you drive through life a little slower, and then you don't feel the bumps as chaotically. You don't flip into the ditch as much. Yeah. Um, because it's no big deal. You're going to get there. Totally. You know? I. That's funny that you said that, man. I was when you were talking before you brought up being getting older. I was like, yeah, I, what he's talking about is experience from living life. <laughs> and then you said that. I was like, yep, yeah, okay. Definitely. And it does, I think it comes, at least for me, it came from driving way too fast for a long time Mm -hmm. and hitting the ditch over and over and over again. Same ditch. Yeah, same ditch too. Whoops. Yep. And then finally realizing like, I don't know, maybe in my late thirties was getting ready to turn 40. It was when I was like, oh, I don't have to do that. I can like take my time. And cultivate stuff and then then all the, the things kind of open up at that point and for you I, I Kevin sent me a, a bio of yours and uh, it talked a little bit about you turning 40 and and you know writing songs with Neil and stuff and so is the reservoir that? Or is are those songs that you wrote on your own? Um, I, I you were a little muffled there. I didn't I didn't fully hear you said that I, when I I turned forty and I was writing songs with Neil. Yeah, is oh it, well no uh, the the I was writing songs and sending like when Neil he heard the first songs that I was writing. Um, I just turned. Uh, there might have been something in there in that the stuff from Kevin and some of the bio stuff that when I, I turned 40 for the Memories and Birds record oh, um, okay. around okay. that time, the last solo record I did. And then we did a, two six string drag records, my band in between this record and that record. Okay. So in that seven year break, um, the, the stuff with Neil, like Neil and I toured Europe in, in, in the late nineties and, and, and we, we didn't really write, too much together it was more we would just show each other songs and then we'd play with each other um at these solo shows that we were playing together you know we would we would trade songs and um but as far as the reservoir i was writing a lot of stuff uh late 2018 early 2019 Mm. um and neil heard you know neil and i have been you know friends for a long time um 
and you know we would hear each other's stuff either out in public or or giving it you know each other demos or whatever or um or gary would uh who was our both of our friend and manager gary waldman um would send each us each other stuff sometimes what we're working on mm-hmm. um and Gary sent Neil a few of the songs back in April or May of 2019. And Neil texted me and said, Hey, I heard the, some of the new stuff from Gary. I'm really, really digging it. It seems like it's kind of next level for you. And, um, and then I, he was like, send me some more when you make more demos or if you have any more. And I sent him the first song that ended up on the record. Don't you know what's on my mind? And he started texting me. <laughs> immediately and then calling me which neil didn't normally do just text um, but he was calling me i was like why is neil calling <laughs> and uh and i looked at his text before i called him back and he was like man uh i gotta talk to you about this song he said uh um man uh i just want to let you know that i would i think this is a paraphrase but he said something like i would I'll walk a hundred miles through barbed wire to be involved in this record. Oh, shit. And, uh, and, but you know, which is awesome, but Neil and I are full of hyperbole as well as songwriters. <laughs> so, I mean, I, that was a lot. It was really, really saying a lot because before he would say things like, Oh, it's really great. And blah, blah, blah. And I can't believe this and that. And he'd get excited and we both get really excited <laughs> about stuff. But, um, but it, this was a little beyond the normal Neil hyperbole. And, uh, so I called him and he was like, man, I'm at a loss for words. He was like, I want to be involved in some way. He said, I'll help produce. He said, or I'll play guitar or I'll produce and not play any guitar. I don't care if I play on it. I just want to help with it. He said, and if you don't want any of that, uh, I'll help you get it to someone who will produce it and can help you or label or whatever it is. I want to help help these songs need to get heard. Um, and so I talked to him a few times on the phone and and then you know through some texting back and forth um about approach and from me sending him a few other songs we kind of came to the conclusion that yeah it would be best if he produced the record and he'd play some guitar and sing on it and we're going to get him to play a little piano because I, I love the way neil p- plays piano he's very good um he was very good uh, accompanist um on piano he didn't play too much um and uh, he played like I would play piano if I was playing, if I could play, and I played along with my stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, and then we just started from there, just talking about approach to the record and what the vision was for it and, um, you know, who we might want to play on it. So, um, so, so basically at that point, I was just sending him a lot of demos, and he was just, you know, we were trying to whittle it down to 10 to 12 songs, which was kind of hard because I'd written a bunch. So. Yeah. <clears throat> he we we met a couple of times and he really seemed like the kind of person that uh was very good at encouraging art to come out of people that was something that mm-hmm. he did for me and i what is a city without its music the legacy of the new york philharmonic is incredible nearly two centuries of history that's a lot of music and a lot of stories i was sitting on stage for the very first time thinking i can't quite believe this is happening join me jamie bernstein as we explore the history of the new york philharmonic it's the ny phil story made in new york a podcast about a city its people and their orchestra Listen wherever you get podcasts. When you're in the position like that and you've got somebody helping you do something, and how do you keep going when that resource disappears? Like, was the record finished when he passed or you were still in the midst of figuring yeah. it out, right? No, we hadn't started. We hadn't started it yet. Oh, um, shit. We had just been working on, you know, just I'd just been sending demos. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd whittled it down to about 15 or 16 songs to try Mm -hmm. and what priority, you know, the top 10 for priority and back and forth. And, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a shock and, um, to say, um, it knocked me on my ass. Yeah quite an understatement or is an understatement. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Ultimately, though, I mean, I didn't really care about the record very much at first. I really was just like totally in shock right. um, about Neil as a friend, you know. Um, but eventually, um, Gary, uh, you know, sent me at least the part of the letter where he talked, to, you know, his letter that he left that that, that uh, spoke of you know, what he wanted me to do about the record, you know, and basically he just said, uh, you know, the, the work's already done. You don't really need me. And he basically saying, you know, you didn't really need me and you know what you're doing. And, um, and, uh, I think Neil believed that. And at the same time, that was kind of the way he was as well. Like, oh, you got this, you know, he was all about lifting people up and, mm-hmm. and kind of showing them, uh, themselves artistically um, that it was about them and that you know he was just there to facilitate that and help out with that I mean he he had said that he a couple of times that you know Neil and didn't he didn't always reveal everything going on um, to me and to a lot of people from what I understand um, but he's you know he had texted a couple of times man this record's really I like I thanked him for being involved at one point and he was like, man, thank you. This record is saving my ass. It's like so great. And it, I really relate to this material and, and it's really helping me get through some stuff as well, you know, but that was kind of the gist of it. What I've heard from him right, uh, right. about anything that he was going through. And, um, so anyway, you know, it just, and so we just sort of Gary and I picked up the pieces from there and then we talked to Dave schools. And uh, it made sense to talk to Dave because, you know, Dave was really close to Neil. They played in the band for years together. Right. They shared a lot of their, um, <clears throat> excuse me, approaches about producing records and making music um, with each other um, over the years and more recently because both of them were starting to produce more. Right. Um, and, and really get more into it. Um, uh, producing other people's records and um, and it, yeah it just made a lot of sense I talked to Dave and it just seemed real apparent that he would be the right person for the job and, and you know and Dave just like Neil he's like hey I'm, I'm just here to to you know help facilitate your vision you know just trying to help bring that across and help you stay out of the way of that and all of us just do our job and just help lift these songs up and make sure people hear them and, and hear them and hear them, you know? Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, so it just made sense, you know? And so when we all got together, it was eventually became all folks that had a pretty deep association with Neil. Um, Jesse through hardworking Americans right. and ended up being on the record, which that wasn't originally part of the plan. Um, and, and then, with, obviously, with Tony and um, and Jeff Hill, Jeff, who he played played with Neil for years, right. and he played in Hates and Malays with, and they've been friends for years. And then with Tony with CRP, um, and then through the dead connections they had out in California, right. knowing each other. Um, so yeah, it just it was sort of a. a a family affair, That's you know, so of beautiful. people that like we didn't all have the same association with Neil. We had different associations with Neil, but everybody in that room did pretty much, you know. Yeah. Um, the engineer didn't, but but yeah. besides that, everybody did, you know. Um, yeah. Whether it was Gary Waldman being there some of the time in the schools, and then me, and then all the rest of the guys, and John Ray Shannon, um, Neil had been kind of working with him and. Uh, John being a, sort of an up and coming younger guitar player who played uh, with Zephaniah Hora, um, who Neil had produced Zephaniah's record last year and it's coming out in the next few weeks actually, and that's a wow. wonderful record. John's a great player. Neil was sort of sort of taken him under his wing, you know, like Neil was kind of want to do without being too much of a big brother. You know, right. he was really good at that. Um, at you know, Neil was really good at sort of. Um, lightly carrying people along um, and helping them out, sort of networking, so to speak, 
right. um, musically and bringing people together and, and sort of helping people along. Um, uh, and that's what he was doing with me. Wow. You know, he had a lot of respect for my stuff for years and I toured with him 20 years ago. I played at his wedding in the nineties, um, with my band and, uh, but I guess he was at a time in his life and then I was at a time in my life and it just sort of worked out and he said, yeah, it's time to work together. Cause we'd talked about it for years. Yeah. We always thought it was funny. It'd be funny to have a, like a sort of a, a, a group of like me, him and Ryan together, like all of us writing and playing together. <laughs> the room probably would have exploded, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's, but, a, uh, it's a trip to hear you talk about schools and what his role was in bringing this project to life. I never thought of it like that, man. Like how the producer of an album has to have the ability to see the thing in its completion before it's done, or even be able to see through to what your vision is of it and help you Mm -hmm. to bring that thing to life. That is a, like in the, what is that the taken? <laughs> That's a very particular set of skills that is mm-hmm. not common, man. And I, so like I draw, right. And I think mm-hmm. to myself, if I had somebody that could coax me that saw my drawing before it was done and help me get there, how much mm-hmm. better it could be. D- does it feel mm-hmm. like that when somebody's doing that with you to, to bring the thing out? I think that Dave, like what he did was, was more a facilitator of, it it, it was, I guess it was, it was somewhat psych. it was musical, but it was, it was also psychological. Like a lot of producers have to, to, to be, um, he was very encouraging and, he trusted us and the more we all worked together, the more he trusted us and the more we trusted him and everybody just trusted each other. Um, like at some point we would do a couple of songs and Dave would be like, I'm just washing clean dishes at this point, you know? (laughs) Um, you know, and to some degree, like he respected the songs. There wasn't a lot of arrangement to do. Um, it was a matter of just getting the right performances and adding us, a few little touches here and there we did most of them live and i mean it's real hard for anybody to tell tony and jeff what to do because those guys just you know and i felt the set like the way dave was speaking about doing the record um we also felt the same way like playing with each other i think i felt that way like i mean if you can't play with tony and jeff like i don't i mean at least if I can't, you know, um, and maybe this flies in the face of what I said earlier about people not grooving together, but we just grooved together. It was just right. easy. I never felt like it was like in a weird pocket or it wasn't not a weird pocket, like a, but like it just didn't work with me. Like I felt like it was like riding a bike. Oh. Um, and really easy to play with John and Jesse and John and Jesse played well together. They have totally different styles, different approaches, but it worked. Um, and like John is a little, he's more trained and Jesse's less, less like schooled, like, um, uh, in like music theory training and all that kind of right. stuff. And he's a little more stuff. on the field side of things, mm-hmm. but in the technical side, but they worked really well together. It was perfect. It was a great sort of, um, the, the, uh, the sum of it was greater for sure um, than the individuals uh, at times. And, um, and, and then everybody can sing harmony there. So that was easy. Um, so it was like, it was sort of like just getting the right performance vocally and the right feel for me. And the rest was sort of like they said, just washing clean washing dishes. dishes. <laughs> you know, I didn't, and, and mixing it, I think for Chris was sort of that way too. It's like when well, those guys, all those guys with their tones, and the way they play, it's like, man, just don't screw it up, you know. Yeah, don't <laughs> and that's what with Neil. It. That's that's what Neil said, um, you know. Uh, later on, like right before um, he passed away, you know, he was just like, "Look, Kenny, we just can't screw this up. We cannot get in the way and fuck this up. We can't do it." 
Wow. He was like, that's the worst. Like, that's the one thing that we can do. He said, if we get out of the way, this thing will be great. You it, know? it really is, too, man. It, it really and is. And that was, Dave helped us get out of the way. That's, I think that was the most important thing. Like, Dave didn't sit there and go, oh, we need to do a C sharp there. That's not what he was there for. Okay. You know? Um, he was there uh, to guide us all and be a leader and sort of when, when we needed it, captain the ship. And then at times he'd step aside and let the first mate take over, which was me, sort of, you know, or <laughs> there was no no captain and no first mate. It was just like whoever had a good idea, we'd try it, you know, or we wouldn't. And um, he just trusted us. And he was more there to make sure it was the right take a lot of times, but to be objective because we trusted him. Right. There was a couple times where I was like, oh, maybe we should do it again, or should I overdub the vocal on that? Because we did most of the vocals were live. The lead vocals, like 13 out of 16 songs, I think, is on the record or the live vocal in the room. Oh, wow. Um, for the most part. I mean, there's not a lot of overdubs on it either. There's a couple little things here and there and some harmonies or percussion, but mostly it's just five guys in the room playing. And um, very simply and understated, um, which is a you know a testament to those guys, and they were doing the same thing. Let's just get out of the way of the song. Let's just not overthink this. Let's just get in there and let the magic happen. Wow. And um, and Dave, a couple of times, he he would stop me. He would save me from myself, which I'm so <laughs> glad he was there to do. And go, dude, you are not doing that vocal again. You know, oh, he was wow. like, I had chills. The hairs were standing up on my arm, and I totally believe the guy's singing. And I don't know what you're going to do besides just overthink it. Yeah, you know, yeah, don't you're mess with fuck it. this up if you try and do it again. Don't fuck this up. So yeah. he was there, Dave. Don't fuck this up, schools. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I mean, he knew the caliber of guys in the room too. Right, right. You know, he knew those guys. It's, you know. It was all complimentary. Like everybody was lifting each other up. You know, it definitely was, it's, you know, at a higher level than anyone walked in the room by themselves. You know, nope. the art was. I, I feel that way. And it's set break. Everybody get up and stretch. Yeah. Look around. Shit's going to get weird. Here Rub we go. your eyes. What, and what are we talking about adjust. at set break, Apple? Uh, well, at set break, we're going to talk today about one of our fine sponsors, which is Define, Define Premium, Premium Cannabis. Cannabis. So come on out to Define. Define. We have a location in Hillsboro and another location in cute little Forest, Forest Grove. Grove. So if you want to come out, you need to take, I mean, right now uh, we are busy as ever and we are getting busier. It seems like people are really enjoying their medicine literally flying off the shelves it is it's hard to keep up with so if you need help uh it's a confusing world out there when it comes to the cannabis game but we have all your smokables edibles dabbables topicals vapables we have we have it all and we love educating people we have picked up a lot more uh elderly clientele through this and everything and we are there to help you so come out and visit you make sure to say that you are a listener to the show you will get 10% off your purchase, and you will get a free, free t-shirt. t-shirt. So come out and visit. I'm at the Hillsboro location. And get some Define Premium Cannabis and take care of your head. Have you ever listened to Black Sabbath? Out of a minion with a hit of acid on his tongue? That you got from Electric Fish Lights? Shit! We I have. have. <laughs> head over to electricfishlights.com or at Electric Fish Lights on Instagram, and you will see some of the most marvelous, amazing, stupendous, unique. and unique creations ever put before mankind. These are created with IQ technology, which is interlocking quadrilaterals, which is 30 interlocking pieces that can be configured into 15 different shapes, and then these mystical, magical magicians put all these shapes together, and it becomes endless. And you pretty much you tell them what you want them to build and they put it together They'll for you. They'll figure out how to do it. Sports teams, Minions, Pickle Rick, SpongeBob. I got a Fish Fish. Apple. I got a Minion on Acid and an Eagle, Philadelphia Eagles. And they got all your sports teams too. 
Yep. And I've got a little yoga sloth. I mean, who Come doesn't on. love that? I even saw a unicorn. Well, I really w- saw one. One of our listeners sent us a photo of their personalized logo on a beautiful oh, light yeah. in their get wonderful inverted. room. Like get inverted. Get inverted. So, yeah. So all these are made from upcycled vinyl like milk jug plastic, come with a 12-foot cord, a 12-year energy efficient safe to leave on LED bulb, and a hardware kit to hang your lights so they do leave you hanging. These are great for your kids' rooms or your festival easy up or just a nightlight for your room, man. And any NSR family that orders the light with the color changing upgrade, they get a limited edition special edition promo no simple road poster. That looks so awesome that is when you freaking use amazing. those lights. And if you enter the promo code NSR at checkout, you will receive 10% off your order. So 10%. You know what? You need to get one of the bulbs that color changes and has a speaker in it yeah. so that you can Why listen to Why bother without the speaker? Yeah, you'll be just disappointed if you don't. So, like I said, electricfishlights.com online or at electricfishlights on Instagram. Go over there. Tell them what you want. Have them build it for you. And then when it comes to your house, you will be enlightened. And now set breaks over. Let's get back to the show. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Cross-playing with I, had, I had well well I had played I had done one demo of the song that ended up being on the record a, a little bit different kind of version of just because um, that in like 2006 or so I, when I was in New York Jeff recorded a demo of it for us and uh, it was with different drummer and the junk into young keys and uh, but Jeff played bass on that and um and I had been around Jeff because, um, mostly because I toured and did some shows opening for Robert Randolph with my solo band, and Hazy Malays also was on the bill. So it was us three. It was Hazy Malays. So that was Jeff, Dan, and Neil, and then my solo band and Robert Randolph. So it was quite the triple oh, bill. It was wow. pretty fun. And that was like on the first big Robert Randolph tour, to where it was just kind of blowing up. And playing, you know, starting to play 700 to 1200 seniors. Okay. Um, so that was super fun. So, um, yeah, so I got to hang out with Jeff a little bit more. And so he was, Jeff was already a fan of my stuff, and Neil had turned him on to a lot of it. Um, so I had that connection with him. Um, but I, besides that, the other guys, it was all through Neil, really. Wow. Um, his, Schools had seen back in the day, he said he thinks he had seen my band Six Strings Rag back in the early days because um, we would play in Athens a lot because we were from South Carolina and North Carolina, so we would play in Athens, Georgia a lot. Um, so he would be in town. He'd say he'd been there a few times where he thinks that he saw us back in the day. And and actually, the guy who played guitar for a little while with us, William Tonks, um, his friends with schools, and... Um, Played in a band with Todd, the old drummer from from Widespread, in, a, in an NRDQ cover band called um, Barbara Q. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great name. Yeah, so we just know a lot of the same people, Dave and I, from the Athens days. Just funny, we never really crossed paths. Yeah, you know? yeah the scene isn't but, that big. No, it's not. Yeah. So we're a lot of mutual friends. Like we probably know forty people in Athens, the same people. See, you um, know. I I think about a project like this for you that's infused with so much emotion and then culminating in the recording and having Dave produce it. And then now it's done. Like, tell me, how does that, how does that feel for you, Kenny, to finally have it finished? And like, you know, the baby is born. So now like, how does that feel? Um, like I need to have another baby. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. but, you know, my mom was Catholic. She had six kids. Yeah. Years, so that's ready for the day. Let's um, get another one. Loretta Lynn. One's on the way. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's been great. It's really Good. been kind of more emotional than I expected. Like the, when the first single came out, you know, I was texting the guys in the band at schools and telling them thank you and, you know, telling them, yeah, sending them links to it, everything, um, for the streaming sites. And, and, uh, I was just getting choked up and I just didn't expect that. You know, I was very emotional that day. 
because a lot of that stuff just started to come back up with Neil and everything right. that had happened um, in my life and all the stuff I'd been through with, you know, death of a handful of friends and relatives and my separation and my marriage and just a lot of stuff. And, you know, my kids had moved out of the house, both of them were of age to, to live on their own and be in college. And so there's just so much, um, uh, of sort of turbulence, I guess, for lack of storms, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just thinking back on that stuff without, not even necessarily in the front of my brain, but just all of that hitting me uh, sort of deep in the subconscious and coming to the surface uh, a little bit at that time, um, I got pretty emotional. And then when the record was released last week, it, it, the same thing sort of happened. And also, you know, I was just, I like overwhelmed with like gra gratitude and sadness at the same time, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and sort of that healing pain, you know, um, and also, you know, I've been talking about Neil a lot, you know, yeah. and the guys in the band, and so I'm really, really, it makes it's like I said, it's very sad, and it's upsetting at the same time. I'm so grateful, you know, wow. for Neil and for Dave and all the guys who played on it and everybody helped to make everybody help make the record and was involved with it in any way to help it come to fruition. It was just very, um, very deep growing kind of feeling, you know? Yeah, man. It's I... like the, the plant feels itself growing in a weird way. You know? <laughs> well, it's um, also like an energetic release too, man. Like it's been building mm -hmm. up and, and this is the culmination of the, I'm doing air quotes of the ritual. Like it's, mm -hmm. it is, it yeah. is finished and boom. Yeah. Here, you're here kind of pushing the smoke up into the air out of totally. the fire and mm -hmm. making signals out of it. You know, people seem to be, and also it affects me too, because people seem to be getting the record. I think they're like getting what it's about or there's like you guys were saying, it's like you, you kind of, there's a sense of it and, and what's going on in the record. And, you know, I forget about that part until I hear that kind mm. of reflected back at me. Okay. Um, like the, the intention of the songs and the pain that sort of created them. Um, uh, and where they came from, I really didn't, it's like, I'm sort of almost a little bit shocked sometimes when people are like, Oh my God, uh, somebody texted me the other day and they said, man, and I know they'd been through some stuff and they, they, they were like, you know, some of the lyrics are like a kick in the gut, you know? And I'm like, really? Oh, oh yeah. That's sort of what I, why I wrote them, <laughs> you know, not to kick anybody in the gut because I was feeling the kick in the gut, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I forget that. I'm just, like I said, I'm a little bit because I get removed from it doing all this other aspect of, of, of releasing a record, you know, and doing the art and sort of in the next phase and it's kind of pulled back into that. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. Well, it's a, it's a trip right now too. First of all, thank you for releasing it <clears throat> in the middle of what this world is in right now. Yeah, It's like, I'm it's like music. You, well, a lot of people are kind of recording and holding stuff back. I mean, cause normally you'd be releasing mm -hmm. this, then planning on touring sure. a little and stuff. Right now, music is needed more than ever, and people are listening different. I mean, to, uh, we're listening more intently. People are eating up content and listening with different ears, and much more. We're yeah. in a much more sensitive world right now. So to mm -hmm. put out an album yeah. like uh, of this, this very close stuff, and getting to hear like, like it's always interested if you played with these guys. We got to hear you guys live in the studio meshing well like it came together we're a witness mm -hmm. to that and it's being released mm -hmm. at a time that's unprecedented in this world where we need people are hungry for this stuff and yeah it, it's great and i mean i imagine you're probably planning on you know once we figure out what's going on you know doing some touring behind this and stuff yeah hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. yeah it might be touring for two records, three records, a double album, and then whatever's next. You know, we might make the record, and then it'll come out next year. And <laughs> we'll tour for both both of the projects. You know, so. it's it's just nuts what's going on, man. We we just had some friends over, and uh, we were just talking about like the shows that are happening right now, like drive-in theater stuff and the 
they put up platforms in, in Europe and everybody went to a festival mm-hmm. on platforms and it's just all so odd, Kenny. Like, <laughs> and it's, it's a science fiction novel for sure. Dude, I, I couldn't even write, have written this science fiction novel is how weird no. it is. It, it, I keep equating it to, and just because I'm me, like, it feels like a prolonged psychedelic trip, and I'm like, okay, I'm I've been high long enough. Like, I really would like to come down now. <laughs> Just yeah, I'm, I'm I over think, it. yeah, that's enough. Yeah, yeah that's enough. I'm, I'm yeah, done. I'd like to turn this. Can I turn this thing off right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but can we turn the lights on? Totally. Fine. Shut the music off. But like Apple said, man, people's ears are different right now, Kenny. I know mine are. They're very mm-hmm. different. I our we're all raw emotionally because of everything Mm -hmm. that's happening and so having something with the depth of like what you put out released right now is striking a different chord than it could have otherwise or maybe would Mm -hmm. have i don't know but it definitely hit me in a in a different way and and it feels un prophetic in a way like listening to albums that like you did, like the pain and all that, like you didn't write it today and release it today. This was months and years and, you know, and it's, but it's right now. And so it's It's bizarre, right? It very feels like you're writing for, you were writing for right now. And sometimes that's just such a trip because the things that we're doing now, it's not necessarily for tomorrow. It's for later. And later is when we get it and i think that's kind of what aaron was saying like you and and apple was saying it's you wrote it before but you wrote it for now so thank you for that because you are providing whether you know and you not just you whoever's doing these these, like you're not the only one who's releasing music right now and you are all sure you know in a sense you know prophesying and comforting us at the same time about these hard times that we all have to go through. And so from that end, I'd like to just thank you because, you know, whether we can go see you or not, we're still able to, like Apple said, listen with different ears and f- like be comforted and fed at the same time. Mm. Comfort well, food music. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting. You know, it is it's sort of like, uh, it's interesting because I mean, the record is all about isolation. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's all about isolation and trying to turn that into being okay with solitude because one is healthy and one of them is a little sketchy, yes. you know, and one of them, um, one of them is, you know, you're forced to be alone. And, um, if you can turn that into, or you feel, you sense that you're the other one, you're alone. And then if you can turn that into a choice, um, like gratitude if you can just look at it different you know we've learned so much i mean this it's it's like neil's death you know i i wouldn't you know i wouldn't trade all the lessons to not have neil back i'll take him back you know yeah i'll learn him a different way you know totally. and i don't want i don't wish the pandemic had happened but at the same time i've learned so much from it yeah we're here you know? now Wow, I we're here now. We can't, we can't change that. All we can do is like, is this going to be, you know, something to be a victim of or to be grateful for? You know, yeah. and and that's it's not that there's so much pain in it, you know, and so but there's so many lessons in it, you know. I hadn't thought that, of that. Uh, that I've gotten, you know. Yeah, so think about that too. Like your pain is the balm for someone else's. That's the way it is, though. That's you know, nuts. that's the way it is with recovery and stuff as well. You know, or groups getting together, or two people sharing. It, it's sharing honestly, um, really for yourself. You know, because it's the medicine you need to let it out. But it also gives when the people it gives permission for not only for people to other people to hear it. Um, it opens the door for them to hear it. It also opens the door for them to share it back or with someone else, yeah. you know, and it also which is the bomb us... for them as well. So it continues on, yeah. you know, it's a giving permission for honesty. And if people can hear you tell your story a little bit 
with an open heart, then they realize it's okay to soften up and tell their story yeah. too, or to, you know, to identify with that. So, you know, the record's about isolation, um, but the, the, the grand, the loftiest goal would be that somebody would identify with it and it might help them. I don't know. That's not why I made it, you know? No. Um, but I also don't deny it when somebody says this helps me or that if this is going to help some people, I don't sit there and go, no, nah, it won't, whatever, you know? Um, it <laughs> might. <laughs> you can't predict how someone's mm-hmm. art is going to affect them. Like yeah, sometimes, no, it's not my right? job. Sometimes you just walk into the store and you see a piece of art or clothing or a photo and it just strikes you for no reason. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, and so that's what is happening right now with a lot of uh, psyches and emotions and hearts well, with, with your isolation album. And another aspect to it too is that you know if the, the it's about isolation at the same time you're singing about that if I identify with the theme or the content right then I know that somebody else out there gets it how I'm getting mm-hmm. it and I don't feel quite as isolated <laughs> in in that because now I have found connection through somebody else's pain identifying with my own and that is gigantic man that's mm-hmm. that's a crazy part like of doing the podcast that I didn't never I never thought that was a part of having conversations with people that never crossed my mind. And then we started doing what we're doing and people are telling us, geez, you know, that conversation that you guys had with such and such or so-and-so really helped me. And like you said, that's not what I'm thinking about when I do it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But if that's a byproduct that's going out into the multiverse out there, then I'm really okay with that part of it. I'm, I'm absolutely. Yeah. You know, I like. I think that identification thing is um, it's 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 so much stronger of a medicine and a door opener, if you if you will, um, than telling somebody it's going to be all right because yeah, nobody shit. wants to hear that especially when you're in the middle of the shit it's trying you know man you're like shut up man it's <laughs> not gonna be all right you know because it's... depression and things like that it's not about to me it's not about that you can't see the bright side well i can see it i just can't feel it oh, i don't shit. believe it yeah. you know like i can see it intellectually oh yeah I see the sun comes up every day. I know my history. It's been all right before. It'll be all right again. But when you, when you, when you can feel the bright side, you know, or you feel like the healing or whatever's going on, I think that's what's most important. That's the sap. You know, somebody's words about what you're going through is not sap. It almost feels like an insult, insult in the woods. Yeah, sometimes. salt. Yeah. Sometimes somebody, it's the same, it's a different side of the same coin as, a compliment, you know, I've read about it recently. A compliment can just be a, another side to the same coin of, of 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 shaming or blame or any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a, a cut, it can be like a cut down when you're not open for it. Yes. Oh shit! And that, like you don't want to hear that. You know, yes. you just don't want to hear it. I'm not sure you've been there before. You're like, oh, I feel like crap. Well, you're going to be okay. Shut up. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Know? Yeah. I don't know why that is. It's just for some reason, like the ego and the psyche or whatever it is, like it takes that almost as an insult. You know, if you're feeling bad about yourself, you do not want to be praised, you know, but if I, came you want to, to be, given a, a, you want to be given a hug. Yeah. If I came to you and I was like, you know what, man, me too. And at least yeah. we're here together, man. We'll deal yeah. with it. Then, then. And it, yeah. yeah. Well, and then sometimes, like you said, you want to be given a hug, but sometimes somebody doesn't want to freaking be touched. But <laughs> but I'll listen to what you have to say, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. or I'll watch something that will change my mind. And that's why, like, arts, art, all the arts and artists out there, like, this is such a great time for all of us to just revive our art and just to mm-hmm. just do it. Like you were saying, it's not about, like, nitpicking yourself 
it was just like when you get in the groove, like when you're doing a puzzle and you find all the pieces and they're going together really well at that moment. Like, okay, it's a thousand pieces. You're only doing 200. You've got <laughs> however much more to go. But like in yeah. that moment, you're you're in it. And yeah, yeah. It, it's just, uh, yeah, I guess it's just what? the the n- knowledge of all of us being in that same wavelength. You well, know? The, it just, when you're talking, it just for, like when people talk about depression, which I mean, everybody has to an extent, people... I hear people like, how do I get rid of my depression? You know what? You can't get rid of depression. You got to learn to live mm-hmm. with it. You got to learn to shine it up it. on days. You got to learn to, yeah. And there's no getting rid of I've that stuff. I've learned to not run from it. I, I've, yeah. I've learned to not run from it so much and sort of sit with it. Um, and, and at least long enough to learn from it and not be in danger. You know, and then if I'm in, if I'm in it deep enough, you know, I have to sort of expose it because it, 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 softens that creature and that dragon in the light you know you you throw the put that on the floor a little bit you know and just say "Eh, i'm going down a dark road it's a little darker than i'd like you know um i have no guidance here like no i'm going into the woods here in case check on me kind of thing (laughs) i'm going in i'm going in y'all you know put the ropes (laughs) around my way i'm jumping down there you know and and to learn something from it because if you run from it you're sort of looking for a fix You know, you want it to go away and it's not going to go away because it's human suffering. It's the human condition. Now, I'm not giving advice on what people to do with their depression, you know, when it's chemical. And, you know, I have a little bit of that, too, that runs in my family. But with me, as long as I feel safe and I have guidance, you know, um, then then I try to learn from it. You know, and I've also been careful about some medications for creative reasons, you know, um, I've probably got some form of ADHD and all kinds of other fun stuff, but, but, and it also, it's the same thing. My addictive personality, all that stuff, it helps me get a lot done. Yeah, no shit. It it can be a tool. Yeah. Use it as a tool. I try to use it as a tool, just like the, 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 you know, tragedy. And things you go through, it's like, what can I use this for? What is because it's pointless if it's only for the suffering itself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's that's you, torture. And you can't only, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, that's you know, yeah, and, masochism, and torture, terrible. narcissism. That's yeah, all that business. Yeah. And we can get into those, like you know, like sure. on certain events. But yeah, like let's use it for something. That, let's do something with that energy instead of let it make us scared that viewpoint that yeah there's the, the fear and the ego and all that kind of stuff i mean it's there for a reason yeah but it doesn't have to be the only reason you know it doesn't have to rule you it's like is this making me cautious is this you know making me make sure that this person is safe that i'm hanging out with like all that kind of stuff like ego like it's there for all kinds of reasons you know mm-hmm. that at least a little bit i know about it you know um that was just sort of, I guess that was a joke. I just said what I know. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh, um, shit. But what the world knows about the ego and it taught me, um, there we go again. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's, there's a purpose for it. You know, it's, it's not, you're not going to get rid of it and you shouldn't, you know? No, I, it, it, it's it's a huge part of our Healthy. our us mm-hmm. our usness <laughs> you know it's it, mm-hmm. and the perspective that we're talking about again is a perspective that comes with long miles you know mm-hmm. in my 20s if if you had asked me if i use tragedy to my benefit <laughs> um no you know i mm-hmm. i was not there and and that's okay. Yeah. It's part of the journey. It's it, it, whatever place you're at, that's cool, man. You know, like we all have to walk our path. That's it. And it's using the things that happen to us to make ourselves better. And, and I think what you're talking about, man, is when you're just sitting in the mire that, and not saying, Hey, I'm going in, tie a rope around my waist that's when the problems happen. That's, that's when you need a little help. Yeah. In my twenties, I was shooting dope and I went in without a rope around my waist and there was nobody there to pull me out and I didn't have the tools to get myself out. And so 
that's what happens. But like Apple said, yeah. we, we do learn to hopefully overcome and uh, use it again as a tool. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that's the point of it, you know, mm-hmm. is to learn. Yeah. Um, I try not to force myself into it too much. It just happens when it happens. I don't look for the answers as much as I used to and try to figure it all out, quote unquote. <laughs> it's, um, it's too big. Because that's trouble too. That's, that's a mess. I'm not smart enough to figure it all yeah, out. Um, and thank God. And, <laughs> and also, but also, you know, as an artist, we do play on the edge of this. Like there's a bit of a buzz, like looking over the edge of that, you know, yeah. artistically. And, you know, you do, you know, sort of go into those dark places and for discovery and for, because it's creative, you know, and you just have to be careful. You know, I don't think you have to go off the deep end. I don't think you have to, uh, you know, I don't think you have to go into the deepest uh, depression or uh, addiction or all that stuff. Um, you know, we'll call it the Keith Richards syndrome. You know, I don't think you have to go there to be Keith Richards. You know, you're not going to be Keith Richards anyway. Right. But I don't think that, you know, you don't have to go look for that stuff um, to be great. Mm-mm. I mean, I've written some of the best stuff I've ever written, you know, sober. You know, I don't think, <laughs> totally. You know, yeah. You know, I don't think that, that, you know, I didn't, I don't write very well. <laughs> you know, I never really wrote that well. What, you know, when yeah. I wasn't, um, that was just an excuse, I think. But, um, yeah, I don't think we have to, like, we don't have to go down the Nick Drake road. That was just his path, you know? Right. That he was on, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't, how would you ever know, but did he have to go down those roads or, yeah. you know, what he was dealing with with that to, to, to create that kind of art? I don't know. We'll, we'll never know. Nope. Um, but if Nick Drake, you know, uh, could have gotten help, you know, who knows what, what he could be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he might be working at a gas station, you know, 10 years later, and he might be happy with it, or he might have made even more incredible art. Who knows? Like, we'll never know. Nope. Um, but I'm not going to find out. I'm trying not to. You know? No, no there's, there's a thing, and that's called acceptance. And you just have to be like, that's what we got. And, and we, we have are. to navigate through that, not around it, but through that. You know, mm-hmm. I wonder, Kenny, like we were talking about isolation and, and we were brought up the pandemic and all that. And just out of curiosity, like person to person, not even like for an interview question or whatever. I'm just curious, man, like how are you dealing with the isolation of quarantine and like what? What stuff are you doing to keep your head about you? Well, you know, I have sort of a, you know, just honestly, you know, I just have programs that I work, you know, I work with recovery stuff. Um, and, and so I was already work, you know, having not, having been married for 23 years almost, um, having kids. And then being on my own, I was already working on this, (laughs) um, being alone and living alone for the first time in forever, probably actually, um, because I was had roommates before I was married too. So I was learning this new isolation thing. So it was just sort of like kick, you know, kick it into the next level with the pandemic. Um, you know, but, but I, I, I already talked on the phone with people, um, and texted people. And so, so for me, what's helped is maintaining contact with people who are, you know, working on themselves like I am right. and, um, trying to get better at life, so to speak and reading about this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I'm all in, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, during the, like even right before the pandemic, I'm like, you know, I'm sleeping on a, a queen size bed and half of it's, you know, taken up with different books and notebooks and stuff. So, <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm the hardest working man in show business sometimes with that stuff. I'm probably working too hard. Um, so, uh, or as I said one time to somebody, I'm the hardest working man with no business these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, 
I think that's really helped me. And that identification, calling up friends and them calling me and being there for other people has really helped me out, yeah. you know, and not really being a victim of it. Going, okay, like it's like radical acceptance of the situation. I think it's huge. It's just like this is the way it is. Radical um, acceptance. Uh, as much as we can see the reality of it, you know, not to get into the whole you know, existential aspect of that, right, what right, is right. real. But, you know, but, but the aspect of it, of, you know, it just acceptance that this is, this is where I am. This is where we are. And we're just going to have to deal with it. And I don't think a lot of people have those tools and I'm very grateful that I already have tools at my disposal um, through things I read and people I'm around who really work hard on that, on, on acceptance and accountability, um, with a lot of this stuff. And, um, you know, that I have these tools that I can use because a lot of people don't. Yeah, you know, man. They're really freaking out, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I also have it better than a lot of people. Right. You know, I'm not going to say that I don't, that I'm not, um, that I don't have uh, certain privileges that other people don't. You know, I'm in a situation where I could just at least for a little bit afford, at least for a few more months, afford to not be working a regular job so I can afford not to be on the road. But at some point, it's going to come down to that. I'm going to have to (laughs) start looking at the grocery store for positions or, you know, (laughs) or getting on the road or trying to raise some money streaming or whatever it is, you know. But um, I've never, I tell myself this a lot, I've never not made it. Wow. You know. That's true, man. Yeah. It's the absolute truth. I've never not made it up until this point. Mm-hmm. At some point, I won't make it. I'm going to die. Right. You know, but I've never not made it through everything that I've been through. You know, and I'll continue to make it until I don't. Totally. So it keeps yeah. me from having a. It's a reality of death and pain and suffering, but it also keeps me from um, being too afraid of it, going off the deep end. You know. Well. Um, I appreciate you, man. Thank, thank you so much, Kenny, for, for all of it, for having this conversation with us and for doing what you do. It's, it's really rad. It's beautiful to behold. And, and I'm stoked that this is out and that we met period. I am. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate being on the show. Yeah, man. And I, and it's a great conversation. I, I, I appreciate getting to talk about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I can ramble on it forever, but, yeah. um, but I really do. I really appreciate that people want to talk about this stuff because I think it's important. It's you know? healing. It's, it's healing. very healing and it, it's, it's nutrition and healing and food and, and, and now that's, that's the, I love that. That's the new mantra in my head. I've never not made it. That is awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thanks for your pearls yeah. of wisdom and your time, Kenny. <laughs> like, no, oh, you, well, you, you were you. talking about things that we're going through too, like, you know, not necessarily your separation, but these massive shifts and changes in life and like dynamic mm-hmm. and how you live. And it is a shake up. And to be able to articulate it beautifully and put it into words. And I think that's kind of why Dave was saying what he was saying. Like, you literally can't because it's this is your experience. And so Mm -hmm. just to be able to put it out the way that you did and to, um, like I said, just share some time with us and conversation, just really appreciate it and can't wait to meet you in real life. Yeah, man. Oh, well, thank you. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you know a couple of days before the episode comes out. It's going to be a couple of weeks, but, um, you know, hang on to my number, man. If you ever want to chat, hit me up. I'm here. Yeah, man. uh, Thank you know, you. Maybe we could share some books with each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Feel free to text me or whatever. Yeah, I got lots of books laying around. <laughs> All right, my friend. I'm going to listen to some old whalers this evening. I know yeah. that now. Yeah, a go to that, man. All that, yeah, like that, some of that Lee Scratch Perry stuff and that Tough Gong stuff, man. I like the stuff right little, before the Island Records stuff. Right oh, before. yeah, the late 60s stuff. Late it's 60. all like public domain stuff now. Like you can, I'll, I'll send a, I'll send a, a text. Um, to this number. Cool. Okay. Um, really of, uh, that. of like some Spotify list or something like that. Go enjoy your day, brother, and we will talk to you soon. Yeah, you too. All right, thank y'all. Thanks. Thanks.
shirts in the flame on the torch. Standing there swaying and I almost got scorched. Swooning there under the moon. I thought it was the rain that was licking my neck. Sharp silver tongue couldn't keep her in check. How does a vampire self reflect a thousand years looking for you? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? I'm what you gonna do, what you gonna do, when a man's got nothing to lose? I keep it all the way there late last night, heart filled with ice and just got tired. Skin was a sizzling when I woke up in the light, what a damn thing I could do. I saw the truth in your lipstick case, love was a splatter all over the place. I can live forever just looking at your face like all the other blood bags do. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Oh, oh, oh. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? When a man's got nothing to lose. In a big wig of bad skin. Oh, 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 oh. Just get a task, get a gift of a casket. Oh, 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 oh. oh, this question here, no enough to ask it. Oh, 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 oh. Ten thousand more years to study every facet, and it's still more blood that we choose. So, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Oh, oh, oh. Just a little, I wish I could drink just a little. But a little is tomorrow, then I'm down at the store, then knocking on your door for some cold food. I wish I could take a little taste, babe, to put me in just the right place, babe. But a little bit of taste puts a look on my face, and I'm on the train that leads me to cold food. in your touch and ain't that a little like cocaine I'm gonna make my whole life a new mess now dancing with the lady in a white dress now that I'm stuck on the rail with a shovel and a pail and on the working train in the same chain of the sea, let me jump in the water, can't swim in water, let the water, Jimmy's daughter, and cocaine, 
Dirty water, Jimmy's daughter from cocaine. Dirty water, Jimmy's daughter from cocaine. Cool. Wow. Heavy, heavy duty. Yeah, that was a dude. That was that, that was like that was like his new album that you guys got to listen yeah, to. This deep. was the, it was, it was emotional, deep. Um, it's a, okay. Everybody does everything different in in life. We all are individuals and we do different things. But just I'm going to give you a little advice, and you do with this what you will. This is to me for Aaron. This is not an album that I would listen to while people are over at the house hanging out. This is not an album I would listen like to party while, while I'm driving to work. No, this is, I, just, this is like isolation. Yeah, kind of get yourself like. some tea, a bowl, or whatever. Sit down in your comfortable spot, dim your lights a little bit, and put this on and absorb what's happening. It is magic. I don't know how else to say it. it genre be damned. All of it. Like, it's magic. And you'll get something really wonderful out of it. And so just take my advice or don't, yeah. whatever. It's cool. No, take it, do it. You could do that. It. You could take it. <laughs> so at the end of the interview, we're, we're towards the end. Um, we're in the outro right now. I want to get a, a reaction from you two. Okay. Mel, how do you feel about the new podcast studio? I absolutely love our new podcast studio i'm one physically very comfortable and that was yes. a huge thing for me during long interviews uh, my back would hurt and i would like zone out because i was in pain and like check out of the interview and i didn't feel that b because of that at all it's <laughs> bitch and chairs too, that yeah. mel scored for the studio it's aesthetically pleasing um, and so it makes, Unlike you Apple. it makes you attentive. Yeah. These make you sit up straight yet comfortable. Apple loves the chairs. Um, so mm. thank you. Shout out to John Lavero out there. Um, because right after you guys had a conversation, you guys meaning Aaron and John, um, Aaron came outside and was like, we want, we, you know, no simple road needs to spruce up. We need to do something with the studio, blah, blah, blah. So Aaron's like giving me his ideas and I just, was like that day I was like, okay, fine. And so I went out and I got this gorgeous carpet and I found these bitchin' chairs um, and this gorgeous uh, table um, and everything, all the pieces that we already have. So it's feels like it's all of us and it feels like all the work that we've accomplished with the show. Mm. So the studio and means a lot to me and I love it. Apple. And it, and it's a I agree with like everything Mel was saying and I know at the beginning I've noticed all three of this was a very engaging interview, but Mel was doing it like first ten minutes. This is our first time sitting in here. It's like a new baby and I, like looking around, like absorb sitting here. This is our first time sitting in here doing this, absorbing it, and it's like. Like so many, I got so many ideas. We have so much yes. room for activities. We could hang this there. What if we had mm -hmm. this over there? Like to to get like right now, we can't. We don't want to put a picture of it out until we. Mm -mm. We're no, we're just, not. We're, we're going to reveal. We're going to make it really cozy mm -hmm. and personal, and it's it's our our spot mm -hmm. when we're not able to like we were. Today well, we were almost thinking of doing it on the porch this morning, but now it's you know it's approaching 100 degrees here today in Portland, which and is and they're weird. logging and yeah, and they're chopping down some trees up on the hill, which you know your chainsaws and stuff. So this is going to be this is going to be a, a little sanctuary for yeah, us. Yeah, it already uh, has become that. I I feel that strongly. Uh, How I do you feel? Baby? I felt so comfortable in this chair. Like my you shoes look like off. A Buddha. <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look like you could just push the mic out of the way and lean back and take a nap now. It's so comfortable. To. And I realized about two thirds of the way through our conversation with Kenny that I was more engaged in the conversation than I would have been sitting in the dining room or on the porch. Yeah. Because I'm comfortable and I could like drift into it. More. That makes your yes. mind more comfortable yeah. and at ease. It, it, I think it, we are all well, more again. Easy. You're not thinking of anything else, mm -mm. so you could be in this more. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, this uh, having a dedicated space like um, like a yoga space, a meditation space, it makes you want to do it more. 
It does. And, and the dining room was, I mean, it, we kind of worked with what we had. It well, it was, was beautiful, but. It was, yeah, it's beautiful. We could see the porch. But That's it, one thing we liked about it. It was like, well, there's the porch right mm-hmm. there on the other side of the windows. But it would, halfway through, it'd get uncomfortable. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, my God, my leg's falling asleep. Or I can't sit up straight. Or, exactly. You know, this is what we need. We, need. we needed it. We, and I'm yeah. really happy we're in here. Thank you for hooking it up, babe. And Darwin welcome. likes it. Darwin's just in here it. to chill in the entire time. Yeah, man, time. I want to take care of you and the show. Because um, also, this is Aaron's uh, full-time job uh, office. So on that yeah. note, we, Both I want Both of my it, jobs are in here. Yeah, I want it to be a space that you want to come into and that you feel comfortable in as opposed to like, fuck, I got to go to work. Like, no, like I get to go in this yeah, room and play today. for your day job, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you get you get to play in here instead of have to do it. So... Why do you have a rear view mirror on your monitor, by the way? So to that catch I could, people come in. So I could <laughs> see who was coming up behind me when I was at work. Oh, that okay. That just carried over from work. Okay, I've been meaning he's got like a little, like you'd see on a bicycle, almost kind of. So left you want me corner. to tell you the real reason? Yeah, sure. Because he was working on the show at his real work, and he wanted to make sure that he oh. was like had his back covered. Yes, <laughs> he's literally watching his own back. Exactly. That that's the honest. Okay, that's <laughs> awesome. Honesty. That's awesome. So, let me just say last before we go. I know Apple has to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys out there, man. And one of the rad parts about doing No Simple Road is being able to bring you new music. And, yes. and also us discovering it with you. Like this isn't stuff that we've listened to for years and we're finally getting to bring it to you. We're discovering it along with you. Yeah. And 99.99% of them are gems. And so this Kenny is a gem and the repercussion, the waves of energy that have blasted out from neil's passing wow are still continue it, it, it just makes me think of jerry garcia and the jam scene happening from that like neil's passing Touched is blessing so us in ways that we can't even see until now and that are going to continue and inspire and bring people together and create music and fun neil's and, ripple is still happening yeah yeah so, he touched a lot of people in this world so thank you kenny for being on the show thank everybody you, out neil. there thank you for I listening i feel like neil's an our angel yeah, i really we're, do we're getting blown up right now <laughs> i love i you love guys. it when people say well like kenny's sending us stuff to listen to now we're gonna discover See? old things in a new way and new things in an old way in you guys way. um i want to we were talking Go about P-Apple. doing a little content oh. um after oh, no. the show um yeah do it mo so i'm gonna start that um, this is something that I wrote back in May, uh, May 9th, and it was just like a little poem about, you know, the beginning stages of the Corona. Oh, wow. Um, well, oh. it's cute. No, it's, it's not bad. It's, um, what about music 2020? What about the concerts this year? What about singing voices? They're not clear. What about the open spaces that don't get danced on? What about your ticket stub collection? Oh, shit. What about inspired movement dances and twirls? What about the backstage pass and riding the rails? What kind of summer will it be without these tales? You'll never think of musical celebration to be taken or you never think of musical celebration will be taken away. You never think a day will be just another day. Fish tour, widespread panic, cheese and the dead all will be listened to in the privacy of my bed. (laughs) Live music is gone. It makes me rather sad for all the kids who won't be turned on this summer. But listen to No Simple Road. It won't be a bummer. (laughs) So that's for you. (laughs) That's for you all out there. Just a fun little silly thing I wrote back in May about, um, you know, what was going on. But that's changing. All that's changing right now. Everything's changing. Yeah. The world is in flux. Constant. And we're in flux with you guys, man. You know? It, it is what it is. I think if I, pu- I pulled a couple of really good pearls of wisdom out of what Kenny was saying, and, and one of them was that um, just accepting where we're at right now and doing the best I can with 
the place in space time that we find ourselves. And, and that's it, includes taking time for the show, creating the studio. We were buying new equipment to help improve our sound. We, you know, there's a lot that we're doing with the show now that we didn't have time for because we were creating the content. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. You know, like we couldn't necessarily, you can't clean your house if you're on vacation. (laughs) No, you cannot do that. (laughs) You could hire somebody. You could hire, but yeah, you know, you have to be there to know, I wanted them to clean out my closet this time. You can't tell, you know what I mean? Like I get you. I'm just being silly. I know you are, but, but so this, everybody's benefiting because I feel a new sense of like rejuvenation with the show. Uh, behind the scenes jake is very involved in helping like our hype man our manager (laughs) yeah non-manager um (laughs) and his excitement is infectious and again just having a new um outlook for the show and a new space it just is i don't know it feels good right now and for kenny to be the one that that broke this in was yeah very fitting. yeah well it feels to me like too that everything we've everything since march has been put on hold and stuff and where everybody including us are tired of holding it's everybody it seems like a lot of people musicians they're starting to figure out their way <clears throat> how to start making it work and turning it <clears throat> in our advantage well, yeah. we're seeing I, i'm not gonna say anything i don't want to jinx it Never mind. Well, we're, we're just not seeing shit. We're um, seeing rambos and unicorns. Yeah, I'm mean, we're excited um, to show A you guys drill. our studio. So hopefully we'll be done within the next week or so and post some fun pics. This yeah, yeah. will never be done. <clears throat> no. no, no, not done, done, but like. But with the approval of we can like share yeah. it, do a video on Instagram and I some just, photos. I just thank like, God I didn't put, let let us put that world map up behind me. Whatever, dude. We, fucking ret- we had a really cool ridiculous. idea. I've even said this years, like a while back. Me and Mel are making a mini studio with a huge map. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. Enjoy the, uh, our ranting, our rantings, our ravings. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, our rumbling, rumblings, grumblings, or murmur, <laughs> <little> murmur, murmur, <laughs> murmur, 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 murmur. And we really love you. And a personal shout out to uh, Jordan and Joe out there. We you'll probably hear this in a year you. since you listen. Yeah. In, in, in order, but <laughs> this hey. is a, this is a little Easter egg for you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a you future guys. Easter egg. We'll be back <laughs> next week with more stuff and things. And we love you. Take care of each other. Safety third. Hydrate. <laughs> wash your hands. And um, we will see you on the other side. Take care of each other, everybody. Tell somebody about No Simple Road this week. Yeah. yeah tell a friend who tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell a friend who will tell a friend. 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 But it's a tad bit of strange similarities that feed an A equal A complex. The fears of your past do not equal the perplexities of the current road. Hey listeners, I want to tell you about the April-May 2023 issue of Relics Magazine. It features a Dave Matthews Band cover story with additional articles and interviews with The National, Graham Nash, Wayne Shorter, ALO, Ivan Neville, our friend Eric Krasno and Stanton Moore, Marty Stewart, and much more. Check out the latest version of Relics and subscribe now at relics.com slash DMB. Thanks, Relics. This is Paul Phelps. 
And this is Monica Strutt. And we're from the Daily Music Business Podcast. We're joined by a number of other really great hosts in creating daily content with great advice for independent musicians just like you. That's right. We put out episodes daily on all topics from music marketing to branding, advice on signing with a manager and label and anything else you need to up-level the business side of your music career. We've got it covered. Subscribe to the Daily Music Business Podcast today on your favorite podcast catcher. Subscribe today to the Daily Music Business Podcast on your favorite podcast platform.